My name is Jordan Villeman, and you listen to Second Stream Sports on 88.7 KBVR Corvallis. How far would you go to help someone? Would you go a thousand miles to learn from and work with people the rest of the world only reads about? The Peace Corps serves over 70 countries around the globe and you can join them. Talk to a Peace Corps recruiter at 1-800-424-8580 or visit peacecorps.gov. Life is calling. How far will you go? It's second stream, but we all never sit the bitch. Rising stars of the radio that watches we ascend. Second stream telling the truth, there's no need to take offense. Grand J. Logan in the booth, so you better pay attention. Good afternoon, Corvallis. You're listening to Second String Sports on 88.7 FM KBVR. Back for uh, another uh, packed show again. We do have a special reoccurring guest now. You can call him a special uh, reoccurring guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? What's up, guys? Jeff Lowe back. Uh, the g Show. g mm-hmm. Show 6 Glow on Twitter. Show. The Glow Show, as some might call it. Back here, uh, back in the booth today. Also made his debut last night on the Beaver Sports Show. That's appearing right. As the man of many faces. So uh, if, yeah, uh, that you is me. <laughs> slide on over to uh, YouTube, KBVR twenty six. You can watch Jeff in one of his finest moments. Yeah, I was Wayne Tinkle, Scott Ruick. Yeah, everyone. I was everyone. I was Isaac, everyone. Yeah, Isaac, Cam, Peyton, Cam, which we'll talk about later in the show. Yeah, but we are back twelve to two every Friday on KBVR. Before we start the show, we can give a quick shout out to. The social media accounts here, uh, you can follow the show at Second String KBVR or hashtag Second String Sports. Whatever, you know, however you may please during the show to log in and, uh, you know, debate what uh, what we're saying. Embrace debate. Embrace That's debate. We do, em- yep. we do embrace debate. And we can give a shout out to uh, our personal Twitters if you do want to tweet directly at us. I am at McGrady 7 Or you can slide into Logan McGinnis's DMs <laughs> at LT McGinnis. At G Low Show Six, as I've already said, or, or Glow Show, or, yeah, there you or go, or Glow Show. However, I like you that say, the best. However, you want to say it, or at Grant Ocampo. Nice and simple. Yeah, nice and simple. Straightforward. Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah, Keep it simple. simple. How, does it, how yeah. does it feel to be the only existing Grant Ocampo on the Twitter sphere? Feels pretty good. You know, I mean. Don't really feel like it's a very common name. But Grant, what if, what if this scenario pops up here in the future that right. a, a Grant Ocampo in the next like <laughs> year gets birthed and he becomes uber famous? And he, he just wants a Twitter. And he wants one, your Twitter name. One year he old. wants your Twitter handle. So this out. is maybe like, I don't know, maybe a kid like that would want to have Twitter in maybe 15 years and he's kid famous. Like he's on like <laughs> okay. a Disney yeah. Channel show. All right. He goes, hey, I want at Grant Ocampo. I will pay you. Ten thousand dollars to have your Twitter handle? Be Do you accept that? Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it hasn't been Grand Ocampo my whole time. Okay. I just changed it for professional reasons, you know. <laughs> but I can add number or something at the end. Okay. You know? Yeah, I'll do it. Well, I'll sell it. Just, just, just for yeah, you can slide in my DMs, make me an offer for my name if you'd like. <laughs> for anyone listening. Solid. Solid. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what uh, those are the social medias. You can also follow us on Facebook, Second String Sports. We do podcasts and throw up all the videos of the show. So if you want to uh, tune in tomorrow and listen to uh, what Jeff has to say, you know, Jeff's got a pretty big L.A. fan base and following. So, I mean, I guess you could say that I am the uh, what you guys, how'd you guys put it? The, the LA, insider. L.A. insider. I like yeah, that. LA I like insider. that title. I'm. I'm almost 100% certain every single time you've ever appeared on our show, you've been wearing something uh, Los Angeles. I try and make Wasn't that. it last week he was a King jersey? Uh, last time I came, I wore a King jersey. Um, you just have to represent. I think I'm usually wearing the Dodger hat. So I try and try and represent LA. Wear like a Laker shirt or something. I got to let everyone know. Uh, you can let that one slide. but <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We got 11 wins and like people That's, still yeah. want to hop on. I was like, all right, come all on. Right. Anyways, let's get into the itinerary today. We got a lot to talk about. We got Oregon State basketball, of course, coming off a huge win last night. We'll get into that and the uh, games coming up. We can talk about that as well. And then, of course, this is the Valentine's Day episode. So we might turn into a little love talk show. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. We got let's do it. Special perspective from someone tweeting in. You know, first half sports, second half love. <laughs> I'm down with that. Anyways, so we do have Super Bowl Fifty to talk about and recap. That was this past Sunday, so it was the first show after the Super Bowl, and of course, it is also All Star Weekend. So yeah, a lot of, a lot NBA, of NBA talk, stuff. Super Bowl analysis. So packed show, really packed show, but. Let's get into it with some Oregon State basketball talk. Last night, huge win against Stanford. Trace Tinkle put up some numbers, as me and Jeff were previously Um, talking about. Almost a double-double. 19-9? Yeah, nine nine boards. Yeah. And Steve Lavin, he was announced in the game last night uh, for Fox Sports 1, and he had some good praise for Trace Tinkle. He said that in a couple of years or so, he's going to be a nice prospect, possibly for NBA scouts. Yeah. Kind of like Doug McDermott a little bit. Yeah, that, that's, coaches, what, coaches, that's, what we, son, that's what we got here. Like, shooter. I'm pretty sure when we were still in the old Snell Hall and Tink, and you know Coach Tinkle wasn't even hired as our head coach, but there was like maybe, maybe you no, know, he got hired and we we're like, wow, you know, we learned about his son. We we're like, well, this could be almost a Doug McDermott situation. Mm-hmm. I, I do kind of remember that actually I, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Vaguely. It's been a while. It's been a it's while. It's been a while since Snell Hall days. But <laughs> Snell in the distant memory. Yeah. R.I.P. But I, yeah, because it's just watching him go into the starting lineup. Uh, he's probably been in the starting lineup for what, about a, maybe a month now? Yeah. I think around ever since UCLA. Couple, yeah. I, I think I UCLA say, was his first start. Yeah. So I would say close to a month, Trey now has been starting. And he's just really embraced it because Trace is just an overall, like, well-rounded player, good coach. Like, it's just it's just yeah, a classic yeah. coach coach's son, son like, yeah. situation. And yeah, you can just you can just like, you can you can see the improvement by game too. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the start of the season, he was he shot. He didn't, his shot was kind of he was yeah, just was, I think he, he was trying to get comfortable. He was forcing things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. He, he would always drive one way or, you know, try to throw up. Still he kinda. still does that, but he's getting a little bit better, mm-hmm. you know, and he'll force up some shots in the paint. He probably shouldn't have tried to draw a lot of contact. Mm-hmm. I think he's playing smarter, more the, comfortably. But when he is in the paint, he also, he's almost pulls like, you know, a GP2 kind of vibe where he's always in the right place at the right time. Yeah, true. He's, he's smart. Mm-hmm. High IQ. Yeah. So, yeah, last night versus Stanford. Huge game. 7 of 13, 19 and 9, like we said. Mm-hmm. And because it was the Stanford, when Stanford came to Corvallis, that was just a, it was an off game. It was us. bad. It was right after we beat Oregon, too. Yeah. And no. that was just, it was an ugly loss because that's a game that you need. Because we, then we played Cal next and we beat Cal. So we just, that was, that's like one, of, that's one of our worst losses of the season so far. Oh, easily. Yeah. As a, as a home loss versus Stanford. And I mean, in that and, game too. If we look back on it, we were just completely outboarded, yeah. bodied every phase of the game, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so last night was big to kind of just get that revenge, get one on the road. Uh, this is only if, his second. Wait, did you say a road win? A road, a road win. victory. What the is very, that? Very uh, rare, rare breed of Oregon State road win. Yeah, I don't, we, I don't know what that is. Oregon State men's basketball has not had a road win. From last night, has not had a road win since the last January. Yep, of last season. That's so, bad. Yeah, uh, it Tinkle's second road win ever as yeah. LSU's head coach. Yeah, so maybe this is the point where maybe it's very perplexing. Things get turned <laughs> yeah. around on the road. I mean, you'd like to hope. I mean, you'd like a like little bit of confidence flowing. Yeah. That now we got some confidence playing on the road. Going maybe it's to like Cal. breaking the dam. Like you know, yeah, you got that one road win in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get the, get the I don't one. know. I like it. You'd like to think. I mean, it's a big game on Saturday against Cal. Yeah. Cal, especially after Cal just housed Oregon. Oof. Yeah. Like 20, right? Like 20, 80, yeah. If any of the Pac-12 teams, if they play at home, yeah. is because right now Cal, I, I think I saw a stat last night where just Cal is um, just way too good at home. And on the road is where they're struggling. Well, it's the same with OSU. I yeah. mean, it's the same got, with us. It's the same with any other. We got like, a 13 point win over Oregon, a, like a 15 point win over SC, a win over Utah. I mean, yeah, I, don't, I think I, mean, uh, I don't know what it is. At home, we are a totally different team. Yeah, last night, on the road. last night during the telecast, I think our RPI or strength of schedule. 
I looked it, it up was, today. It was actually. eight. It was eight, I think. So, well, according to ESPN, because they did their little bracketology today, and they yeah. had they had OSU at nine. They had OSU with uh, things to do. Their RPI is twenty nine, but their strength of schedule is eleven. Okay, that's what it was a strength of schedule. Yeah, I strength remember of schedule is eleven, and that was easily the toughest schedule in the Pac twelve of the of those teams who are still fighting for a spot uh, mm-hmm. to get into the tournament. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the Kansas game where it kind of shows that you know that that helped out a lot you know yeah. with the strength of schedule still but that's the pac-12 the pac-12 is just so deep mm-hmm. and oh, we have it's crazy you know in the past couple of years uh what was it it was almost like washington i can't remember maybe it was like three or four years ago where washington won the pac-12 like season and they lost in the like second or like third round of the pac-12 of the tournament yeah of the pac-12 tournament and they didn't make the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that just, like, from that point now, like, where we are now, it just kind of shows how deep the uh, the Pac-12 is. Mike, Mike over here, our <laughs> intern Mike. Our intern Mike. Media, newly promoted social media intern. Yeah, he's he's gone from just intern video operator to now social media intern. So now if you guys uh, get any tweets, uh, Mike will... Look alert, to, us. You know, alert us he'll send out some tweets but eating a nice muffin. right now he's maybe distracted eating a muffin so <laughs> mike, what, mike what kind of muffin is it it's a poppy seed muffin for anybody that's curious all right yeah because you know all the radio listeners can see mike point up uh hold up a, a muffin yeah. there you go i mean there yeah, go. It's right, it's yeah there it is there it is there it is now it's, on, now that, it's on camera hey if you guys are watching on the live stream it's a poppy seed muffin uh, i so. tried to point it out but <laughs> poppy seed muffins are really dry Okay, but real question. You can get a nice moist it poppy. Looks, it looks like a Costco muffin. Am I am I correct? Am Winko. I, ah, man. Winko muffins are the my, best. My muffin game Shout is not up to snuff. Muffin game. <laughs> <laughs> I know my muffins. True. <laughs> All right, real question, Mook. Have you made your crock pot that you had said last week? No. No. Oh, oh, this oh is that's the thing we're going to have to get into with Jeff. Hey, can we, we have a crock pot maybe sound bite? Like a, a prep? <laughs> like a prep meal? Crock pot prep? Jake's, Jake's mm, thinking. That's a very. Come on, click one. Just click one. Pressure you to click one. What's in your crock pot? <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. We talked about this Jeff last week. Last we're week going we back. Wait, this, we we're, spiraled out of control. We did last spiral week. out of control. Yeah. We might be spiraling out of bad. control this week as well. I don't know. But Jeff, what would you put in your crock pot? Well, like, what am I making? Am I making like a stew? No, no, no. no, just, no what do you put, no, 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 you put no, no. in the crock pot? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Potatoes, meat, vegetables. Okay. All right. Onions. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you, I like you, how you distinguish vegetables from onions. Well, you got to tell me what I'm making. Like, if I'm making a stew, it's different than if I'm making pasta right. sauce. Well, Mike put a Big Mac in his crock pot. Why would you put a Big <laughs> Mac in his crock pot? Big Mac sauce. Big oh, Mac Big so- Mac, so- well, Big Mac sauce. I, I get that. It's yeah. just Thousand Island dressing, but yeah. I mean, I get that. Yeah. So. We are yet to, <laughs> you know, the, it's going to be our icebreaker question when we have athletes on just... Ask them what do you put in your crock pot? <laughs> yeah. yeah, You know, get them a little, loo- a little loose, a little comfortable. It's kind of like a, I mean, it's a question you don't get every day. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah you definitely think about it. it. I want to yeah. know what Tinkle puts in his crock pot. A lot pot. of options. You know, who knows what Tinkle would put in his crock pot? <laughs> <laughs> question of the day. Oh, probably a live animal. I mean, I, like, I guess, I guess venison. He's from Montana. I bet he likes to hunt. Yeah. Something yeah. like venison, something like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So... On the track of Tinkle, let's let's reel it back in. You know, finish up here with Oregon State basketball. I did see a Twitter poll this morning from a, a radio show that was interesting. I want to get your guys' perspective. It says, as an Oregon State fan, what would you rather have? A first loss, you know, first game loss in the tournament, or NIT? What do you take? And the well, NCAA? Do you mean like a, you mean like a yeah, deep like a one and out Pac twelve? Uh, because I'm about to say we did no, that no, no. years yeah, that's and years. What I was thinking. Well, wait, do you mean like a deep NIT run? Yeah, deep NIT run or a one and out March Madness mm. tournament. It was I a think, tough one. I think I'd rather get to the. I'd rather get to the tournament Just to and say, lose. Yeah, I, yeah. because yeah. we haven't yeah. been since. I'd rather get to the NCAA tournament. Since, I think yeah, the, since it's ninety two. You know, even with a one and done, it's almost. More endearing, just, just to just, just to make to it, it, you know, just to you know, see just it, just to, see to feel it. it. Yeah, have just, our, have Oregon State in the bracket when you're making your bracket. Yeah. Make Oregon State go all the way. Make, well, make that one bracket where you have Oregon State yeah, go all the way, exactly. and then have like your real bracket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you also get that you know label from other yeah. teams. Oh, they made the tournament last I, year. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's huge, especially yeah. for it's, recruiting. Exactly, it's a huge building block going going forward to say, okay, we got to the tournament. And I mean, winning an NIT tournament. 
I don't know. I don't really well, think it. Stanford, it's really, did, Stanford did it, what, at last two, two years, two but years I mean, ago? Where's Stanford at now? We yeah. beat them on the road. Yeah. So yeah. The NIT you know? doesn't... Like, the NIT doesn't guarantee you anything. Yeah. So at NCAA tournament birth, one, yes, that would look great for recruiting. Two, how great would that be for the freshman class that's in right yeah, now? Exactly. Just the amount of experience. experience alone to get that class going forward. Because I... I'm not thinking we have any one and dones here. I'm assuming Thompson, Tinkle, Eubanks are going to be here for three, probably four years. I think the only one that would probably go early would probably be Trace, but that's like I, I, I can't away. even really. I don't see, see Trace I can't, going because he's, he's a coach's son. Yeah, you know? well, even, his dad. You know, even that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I don't see it either. Yeah. I see everybody going four. That, I, I can see maybe right Eubanks, now. but Eubanks isn't ready for the for the NBA mm-hmm. right now. I mean. I don't know. Drew's, yeah, Drew's not even thinking it, but he's thinking about playing softball for our intramural team. True. So, well, there you go. Yeah. So that's it right there. True. I mean, so, well, I think what you're saying is for the sake of OSU basketball, you guys have to come back for the next four years just to get him on your softball team so he doesn't leave for the NBA. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can do it. I'll, I'll, sacrifice, I'll, I'll sacrifice that. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. I will stay at Oregon State University for Drew Eubanks to stay four years. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a long four years. Yeah, that'd be a long four years. I might have to break that promise. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. Well, unless I, got I became that like win. unless I became like president of those or like oh, or really State. president of OSU. The next yeah, I just take, I just take Ed Ray. Ray. Yeah. Sorry, Ed Ray. I feel it. <laughs> you guys just said, that. we have a sit Logs down. Sean Fox just walked by. Interviewed Ed Ray last last week. So he walked by the perfect moment then. Yeah. So you'd be like, oh. Breaking in news the, Logan in the McGinnis future, taking Logan. Ed Ray's job. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. That wouldn't happen. We appreciate you, Ed Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. All right. Moving on. Uh, any any last things you guys want to say about men's well, basketball? Cal tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, we're playing Cal besides, tomorrow. Besides, yeah, Cal tomorrow. And we mentioned that in Cal had a huge 20 point win versus yeah. Oregon. And when so what's Oregon's ranked. 11 right they're now. Were, they That's were. What I, was about well, to I, say. Mean, I mean, the, the, the new rankings don't come out till Monday, but yeah, they'll, they'll probably they'll, drop. They'll, they'll drop at least five. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you got us. I don't know who 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 behind Oregon twenty you know, point win against number yeah against number eleven. So yeah, that's what surprised me because I was like, what Oregon's eleven? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, when I saw that ranking, I was like, you, kidding? you know, Oregon's Oregon's good. Uh, They're very I, good. Oregon's a good team, but I think I mean I think we can go down to Eugene and beat them. Oh, I know that, that's mm-hmm. that's next week. That's looking you know past the Cal game, but. Yeah, Dude. well, we, we all know. A team. We all know uh, Matthew Knight Arena likes to be kind of a quiet house. No one yeah. really likes to go there, and it's right. uh, you know it's a very uh, bad environment to even attend to. And we know that we can, compared to Gil Coliseum, we know we can get them. Yep, I'd like to make the trip too to support the beefs. So yeah. you might see me there. But yeah, agreed. I think cool especially trip. tomorrow if we can get the win versus Cal, yeah. going yeah. in with a lot of momentum on the road and with a team we've already beat. Yeah. Rivalry. I mean, I think that's set up to be a big game. Yeah, I've already it, seen. I've already seen a Cal basketball game this year in Cal. How oh, did you? Yeah, know? saw him play Rice. So I've, 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 I've you got I've, some inside I've, info. I've witnessed the Haas Pavilion. They, <laughs> so yeah, maybe. I, I think we. I think we definitely. If I had to give a, a percent chance of us winning that game, I give us a sixty-five percent chance. I almost could give us a favor on the road. It's, uh, it's but, we got to play another complete game. Yeah, that's because we we finally finally played well in the second half. Mm-hmm. And during this whole you know road losing streak, we have been atrocious in the second half of games. I mean, really bad. Yeah, agreed. Do, do we have a tweet? No. Let's <laughs> have a text about crockpots. <laughs> we will address that later. Oh, yeah. I don't know how. Do we have the live stream up? Do we have any uh, dick butte comments? <laughs> dick, yeah. Man, I, I can't even say it. He's a feud. He's, he likes to feud with us. He's he's enemy number one. Tell him to get off the keyboard and come in studio. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just have a picture of John Goodman uh, on the screen. Real zoomed. <laughs> really zoomed in. It's very off, but yeah, that that could have rattled. Inter- that rattled the inter- inter- mood. Inter, inter, inter- <laughs> mic. A little little phased. Um. But Oregon State basketball, uh, what's your guys' maybe key, you know, you mentioned, uh, what's the kind of the play a complete game moving what, forward? What's our keys we got, we got for this a, game? I, l- I went back and looked at this. On this road trip, we get dominated in every single statistical category, except for turnovers. We never lose the turnover battle. Yeah. It's so weird. But we get dominated on the boards, 
They the other team has more assists. They have they have a better free throw, better field goal, better three point shooting percentage. And Gary Payton's had some bad games on the road. Yeah, and there just be times where you know, like you say, we don't turn the ball over. But we'll go through the hugest ice patch yeah. of shooting and just trying to get the ball through the hoop. And it'll yeah. be like a seven minute, like until we get a field goal. Like, it's crazy. And it's weird because we have a lot of scorers, people who can yeah. score. Yeah, we have shooters. I think we're, we, we're, we're one of the top three point shooting teams in yeah. the Pac 12. Yeah. Which is weird. And a stat that I also saw that we were, we're 11th now in free throw shooting percentage in the Pac 12. In the Pac 12. Wow. Well, I don't that's know. Bad. I don't know who. Over, I'm gonna guess uh, Washington State. That'd but be that's my without best guess. looking at it. That's my guess. That'd, Maybe ASU. Yeah, but, but man, yeah. yeah, I don't. There's our free throw shooting is awful. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was like, <laughs> yes, we got it. We bumped up. You we're, not, free we're not the last place it's free the, throw it's shooting a Steve, team. It's the Stevie Thompson going clutch shooting uh, free throws at the end of games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is. Well, we talked about the yeah we did we talked about the Utah game last week yeah we did yeah yeah it's yeah a crazy game yeah uh, other than that uh, I will also mention Stephen Thompson it is now officially time to just let Stevie just because I we did that lot we did this last game where he played a lot of minutes yeah and when Stephen when Stephen Thompson's on the court he's a threat to shoot the, like threat to shoot at any like, any place on the on the floor. Yep. So yeah. I think it's time. I think it's time for Oregon State basketball just to fully unleash Stephen Thompson. And going back, I, I didn't. I didn't mention it, but when we're talking about NBA prospects, yeah. I think he's up there. I mean, I I think that he, he needs to bulk up. Two more yeah, years. It's the, it's the, I mean, obviously, he's, he's got to develop he, he more. Has, but he, you're right. He has to develop quite a bit. But I think that. Just the pure shooting form and and everything else. I think that already the makes best him thing going and for clutch. The best thing going for Stephen Thompson right now is that Steph Curry is doing what he's doing, and he's yep. kind of he's making NBA prospects look at these smaller shooters twice now. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, someone's going to look at that and go, "Wow, well, you know, worked out with Steph Curry because it's a copycat league." Yeah, someone. I'm not saying it'll be a lottery pick or do what yeah. Steph Curry does, but yeah. someone will take a look at that. Agreed. Yeah, and. I, even, you know, going back to the whole coach's th- son thing, too, yeah. uh, he has a little brother currently in high school. Who knows? Oregon State? Ooh. Maybe. Well, we have to uh, maybe re- recruit from when we uh, graduate because we're not allowed to know, but... I'm not recruiting. I'm just saying he yeah, has a little brother in no, high but school. Maybe, 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 <laughs> we can, maybe we can give him some insight. Maybe we'll tweet at him. Yeah, after true. We're done. I don't even know his name. Steer yeah. him in the right direction. Can find it. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Agreed. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on from Oregon State basketball, now let's get into a little football action, a little Super Bowl discussion. Super Bowl 50 went down oh, yeah. I guess. about a week ago. Mm, about Sunday. a week almost, ago. Almost a week ago. Yeah. Uh, Super Bowl 50. Man. A lot of things to talk about after the game, during the game. That's Well, that's the problem right now. Uh, we'll, 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 Peyton we'll, Manning? <laughs> Okay, so a lot of opi- as, opinions to share. As most of America knows, Broncos beat the Panthers twenty four to 10. ten. Yep, and yeah, so it was a it was a very defensive game. There was two offensive touchdowns. You can say it. It was boring. It, it was, was very boring. It was, it was very. a boring Super Bowl for Super Bowl fifty. Yeah. And they had the whole gear up before the game where they have the uh, former MVPs come out on the field, trying to make it iconic. Yeah. And trying to make I it mean, a, that was cool. It was cool. Tom, Tom Brady was the only one who got, got booed, booed, which was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, so do we want to br- – we don't really need to break down the well, game. Not the game itself. There's, I mean, there's certain aspects there's just, of it we can talk about. You don't want to break down Mike Remmers just getting – Destroyed by Von Miller on every play. Former <laughs> former Beave Mike Remmers. All right, good talk about that. <laughs> Von Miller was an absolute. We don't have to beast, do that. But... Mike Remmers has taken an, enough of a beating. All right, yeah. All right, Von Miller is sick there. Super Bowl MVP Von Miller. Mm-hmm. Uh, little disappointed he didn't do his. I'm going to impregnate you Super Bowl or not Super Bowl, but sack dance where he just does the, <laughs> the little shimmy. 
Mm-hmm. Is it called I'm Gonna Impregnate That's you? what I'm calling it. <laughs> okay. That's a <laughs> that's like I've never heard that name. I, yeah, I've Wait. never heard that either. <laughs> I've never heard you. Where did that come from? That's what. It, that's practically what it's called. Because if you look at it, that's because the NFL has fined him multiple times for doing that. What? And he didn't do it. Yeah, he's been fined multiple times for doing his impregnate dance. I did not know that either. Yes. Yeah, so that's where he, he's been fined multiple times for that from the NFL. And he did not do it in the Super Bowl. So I'm just kind of curious. Did Roger Goodell talk to Von Miller be like, hey, if you do your impregnate dance, we will find you. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put it past him. But Von Miller was a beast. He's he's been a, he was a beast all season. That's Von Miller, almost like them and others, won them the Super Bowl on the defensive side. Well, yeah. Uh, not sticking with the Broncos' defense, um, Akib Talib. He got lucky that they won the game. Because, <laughs> man, he had, a, he had a stretch in the second quarter where it was so bad. Watching there, it, it was just hard to watch Akeem Talib try and play football. It was like it wasn't playing football. He yeah, he was looking to just like just knock off someone's head. Well, the whole like the first it started with that personal foul penalty where he's on the sideline and he takes his helmet off. Yeah, which I didn't think it was that bad, but you, you got to be smarter you, you than that. Be smart because it face mask. I thought I was kind of shocked that he didn't get thrown out of the game because yes. that was bad. The that was, face mask was just that was savage, down. to quote Jake McGrady. Yeah, it and was. and there was just so many penalties <laughs> from Akeem to leave there, he, and there yeah. was a couple times where he didn't get called for an offsides or yeah on the on the missed field goal he was offsides that that he yeah. didn't get called for. I think he had a pi or a defensive holding. Yeah. like it was just not a good game okay. for Akeem to leave. But who cares? He's got he's got a ring. He's got a ring. I don't, ring I don't know if he really cares. No. And a key. Okay, so this is this is also a really funny quote. Probably maybe a quote of the year in sports. Uh, maybe not. Okay, it's not a quote of the year in sports, but it was probably the quote of the Super Bowl, in my opinion. After the game, a keep to leave. Uh, he's on the field. He looks at his wife or maybe girlfriend <laughs> or something like that, and he goes, "I'm go or." We're going to get it on tonight. Valentine's Day is coming up. Oh, so I didn't hear that. I, yeah. I, I heard that. That's pretty good. <laughs> so a keep to leave was just oh like he was just on such an adrenaline rush. Like he just from the game after the game, and who knows? Maybe in the bedroom. <laughs> hey, I don't blame him, man. You just you just won Super Bowl fifty. You won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Pretty pretty Akeem, cool feeling. I Akeem imagine. Talib just out of control. We would like to I'm imagine. Not, you know, we're not even going to go down that road. I keep to lead out of control. Yeah, uh, it's a yeah. good way to put it. Yeah, I wish uh, all of us had uh, all of us had significant significant ones that we could all text each uh, text into significant ones. Be like. We're gonna get it on tonight, and then just see what your actual was because it probably would not be as interesting as an Akeem to leave segment. True, yeah. I mean, it, we're going. Sad. It's Valentine. I'm, no, I'm doing I, this for Valentine's Day, no, guys. I like it. It's I fair like game. It. Anything's fair game on this show. But it'd be pretty funny. What if you just do it? Like you do it to a random person. What are the odds, Jake? No. I say Jake <laughs> fires up the old Tinder machine. Yeah. No. No. Okay. We won't. First but message. The old but yeah, oh, yeah. Akeem Talib, just a, a, sa- a savage human being, Jake, you know, uh, Jake, yep. on Super Bowl day. Crazy. Yep. And uh, suspended for how many games next season? Is no. that right? Or he hasn't yet? I don't know if he has got suspended. I don't know. Yet. I. I'm Bert, probably Bert thinking got of, suspended I'm thinking for three of, games. I'm thinking of Bert and he tried to but, appeal it to. Uh, he had a meeting with Goodell. <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't I mean, work. Didn't that's work. what I was saw. That's I didn't I saw. think. I don't know. I didn't really think Vontez should have got suspended. Really? That's, I mean, that's a whole other story, but I didn't really think three games is a lot for, for that hit. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, it, I mean, I'm sure oh, the whole, you know, calling out Antonio Brown and saying that he faked, well, that, that he faked the injury probably didn't help. Well, but yeah. Cause that, that injury really changes the whole practical dynamic playoffs. Of the playoffs. playoffs yeah. Because if, if it, Pittsburgh had is, if Pittsburgh's healthy in these last two playoffs, oh. it's, it's I don't know it's it's totally different because Le'Veon yeah. Bell has never played in a playoff game and Antonio exactly. Brown didn't play against the Steelers. No, no, it's or exactly. the Broncos. If the, if the Pittsburgh Steelers were if they were all everybody was healthy because Ben Roethlisberger was playing with one arm. Yeah, 
if the whole Pittsburgh Steelers team was healthy when they played the Broncos, there's no doubt in my mind they would have beat them. I, I, I mean, Le- Le'Veon Bell definitely doesn't fumble in that game to, yeah. to give yeah. the ball back to the Broncos. I mean, this total doesn't matter now. It's hypothetical, yes. Total hypothetical but, doesn't matter now. Broncos won the Super Bowl, but... But that's what would happen. Yeah. It, it, it's fun to think about. Yeah. But... Yeah. I, I'm still just... I'm, I'm shocked that, you know, the Broncos won the Super Bowl. Because... Well, not just the Super yeah. Bowl in general, but just how they got there. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I remember. You, I remember you with the hot take that they shouldn't even be in the playoffs. Well, they sh- no, like, they should have been in the playoffs. Granted, no, they yeah. had a great record, but there was a chance when they couldn't even yeah. be in the playoffs with like week sixteen, week seven, or like week fifteen, and then they get in the playoffs and they just have the perfect easy ride to get there. Like they, yeah, yeah. But no, like, you know, it. they the Panthers hottest team going into it. Uh, they they proved it there, but man, I mean they they, they had a great game plan against Cam Newton. Yeah, I they mean did. Cam was the MVP and looked bad. Yeah, I uh, mean they, they they made Cam look pedestrian. Yeah, it was that was a Wade <laughs> Wade straight pedestrian. Wade Wade the Phillips defense. Sherman. Wade Phillips uh, in <laughs> kind of out of the league there for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Dallas Cow former Dallas Cowboys head coach. Uh, just uh, great scheme against the thing Cam Wade, Wade Phillips should never be a head coach in the NFL ever again. Just yeah. be a defensive coordinator because that guy is awful as a head coach, but great as a D coordinator. And, and he would also be great at maybe advertising for a barbecue sauce. Oh, uh, Levitard show? <laughs> yeah, but listen to the Levitard show. Emmanuel Sanders did not like that. Yeah. Oh, did you listen to the Emmanuel Sanders yeah. interview? I saw that too. He did not like that. Yeah. CJ Anderson thought it was funny, but... Emmanuel Sanders is having nothing to do with was that. Was there a CJ Anderson interview? Yeah, like that same day, like right That's after. Hilarious. And CJ Anderson thought it was really—he thought it was really funny. Yeah. On the topic of uh, great Super Bowl quotes, did you see Wade Phillips's quote after the game when he was standing on the field after they had won uh-huh. and said, "And we got to see Lady Gaga." Some- <laughs> Did you hear that? No, no, I did it. And he was so stoked about seeing Lady Gaga. I feel like he said also something savage about Cam, where he said something about the dab. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, he there is something like that. I don't. Yeah. I don't have the quote I don't off, know, off the top of my head. But me and Jeff can talk about whether Seahawks players wilding out on Twitter. On Frank Cam Clark, yeah. man. He put Frank up the Clark video. Put up the video. Oh, he the went fumble. back. DVR'd it. Like went back just so he could make a up a storm. NSFW video. Her Cam Newton. <laughs> well, we can get into that right now if we want to. We talked about, you know, the game a little bit. Let's talk about, you know, the highlighted game, which was the league MVP and what happened after the game. Well, that's the thing because everybody is not really caring about how the Broncos had a ginormous. See, Super the Bowl. game was so boring that, yeah, now it's the, all. Yeah, yeah, because the, you know, the Broncos had their Super Bowl parade. Denver was packed and crazy. Oh, and Denver was lit. And, yeah. no, one, and no one's talking about Denver no talking after about, nope. this, this whole Super Bowl. It's debacle. all Peyton it's and all Cam. Cam. That's it. Yeah. And Peyton. You know, and Peyton. Debate yeah. about Peyton, but that'll slow down a little bit. But, yeah. But so let's, talk, yeah. let's talk about the two, you know. Yeah. All right, Jake. We all know that you have a strong opinion about Cam Newton. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have a take. Don't suck. All right. So why don't you introduce what happened, and then you can. Uh, well, which th- which thing? No, uh, how he walked away. Well, I was I was gonna say we could talk about that fumble. Oh, and the video that Frank Clark. Uh, yeah, made. the the fumble was not a good look for Cam. The fumble is not a good look at like at, for any. That wouldn't be a good look for any quarterback. Well, no, Imagine no, no, if that no, was no, Tony no, Romo no. in that situation. Okay, no, 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 no. I'll defend it if it's weak. Like say it's week ten of the regular oh, season. Oh yeah, you don't want to put do your head yeah, out there like fine, that. Fine, whatever. I I get that. Say all right, I don't want to get hurt. It's the in Super the Bowl. Super Bowl, you got to do it. Especially yeah, if you're like, the league you MVP, you have to do it. I I mean, he sorry, literally you got to risk back. the injury. You got to <laughs> risk the injury. I he mean, probably could have recovered that fumble. So uh, yeah, if if Cam had a little he more, he would have taken a hard hit. Because like I mean, when the play happens, it stripped and Cam kind of stands there and looks at it and then goes forward and then the Bronco guy jumps on it and then Cam just stands there. Cam no, Cam literally stepped back. And especially yeah. with the frame that Cam Newton has. Yeah, he's dude, a big six, dude. You're bigger than DNs. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is like my take on it. Yes, he should have jumped on it immediately. But as a quarterback, what are you pra- like? You've practiced throughout the whole season. What's your mindset? Don't dive on the ball. You're going to get injured. And I think in that inst- like in that scenario, he sees the ball on the ground and he pauses. And it's almost I don't know what's going through his head. No one really knows. Right. But I, it's almost instinct to like, oh, I shouldn't jump on this ball because I can get injured, and that's what they're, 
you know, that's what they're trained. That's what they're, you know, coached. That's what they're told to do. And I don't know, just trying to like defend the situation, yeah. but at the same time you have to jump on the ball. Yeah. But I, there's almost, there's I mean, just, the just tough a situation. Thing is no one knows what was going through his head. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's the main thing. Yeah. So, so keeping, uh, keeping on the trend of Cam Newton though, let's talk about, you want to tease a little bit about the press conference post game? Yeah, you got this Jake. It's all you. All right, so you're the, you're the resident Cam Newton hater. So <laughs> true. Well, true. <laughs> uh, post game, Cam Newton goes up. You know, goes up. Body language pretty evident. Not into it. Well, yeah, he, he did just not want to be just there. He just court. lost the Super yeah. Bowl. Have you ever lost the Super Bowl? No. So all right. I can't imagine it's too fun yeah, to be the fun. MVP, lose the Super Bowl, and play so all poorly, right. and to have your receivers drop. You know, eight passes. All right. Turn it over three Here's times, the thing. and then have to answer all these questions about. And like, they're not good questions yeah, either. It's, it's like, like how do you feel? Well, yeah. obviously, how do I feel you feel? Horrible. You just lost the Super Bowl, and you let your teammates down. Talk about it. Like, yeah. you don't want to hear that, you know. Here's the thing. Think of how many people have been in that same situation, losing a Super Bowl, sure, losing a championship, sure. You want to throw back? I don't want to be a little bandwagoned here, but Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, arguably lost a way more painful game yeah. than a. Tremendously more painful situation. But Russell Wilson is a—he's a robot. Hey, he's a true. robot. True. He can I don't know. That. Watch the dude perfect video with Russell Wilson. Doesn't look very robotic in that. But I do agree. Sierra doesn't media. think so. But okay. I don't know. Right, I, I would be Jake. surprised. I could see Sierra thinking that Russell is a robot. I mean, she <laughs> is, she's he, in love with a robot. Well, okay. So. To defend Russell, would you rather have your quarterback like Cam Newton be out in front and really show his emotions and give you all these, you know? Basically, you know, open to criticize or just be Russell and just keep it vanilla. Because if you're Russell, if you just keep it vanilla, no one's no one's going to say anything. Yeah, there, there's 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 nothing good that comes out comes out from being outspoken and then the quarterback. Nothing True. good comes out of it if you're Russell. When I say yeah, when you're at the helm of the team, but yeah, I mean if you're a receiver, it's different. But okay, here's the thing, people. I think it is being blown up way way too big than it should be. Sure. Uh, he is catching undoubted heat for it, but as many you know Undabby? analysts, un, undabby ugh. heat, undab, undab, <laughs> undab. Here's the thing: as many <laughs> NFL analysts have said, I think even Magic Johnson chimed in about it. Yeah, when you're the league MVP and you're representing the league, and I don't care all the BS that people talk about. You just lost the Super Bowl. Have you ever blah blah blah? He's also getting paid money to not just be a football player but to represent an organization he is owned by an organization like the national football league you're representing that you just won league mvp you can't just chill up there and storm off and basically when when he wants to say that you know he's you know kids look up to him do you really want like okay i i you can look at it in both ways people can overanalyze it but in the same situation it's like you can't fully defend that like no i get what you're saying i don't like the whole children are watching you argument that's just well yeah that's i was just, just, I was just using lame, that as an example but, that no, people I know, say I mean, I i'm not mean. saying that i believe that but. i I'm, I'm with you i i don't think it's as big of a deal as people want to make it out to be and yeah. i mean you can tell cam's cam's still in his pads like it's not like cam had time it's kind of like the richard sherman thing a couple years ago it's not like cam had time to sit there compose himself and go back out there. That's a fresh. I mean, that's fresh. He just got to the locker room, threw a hoodie on, and goes out there. You know, so it's totally different. If Cam has time to sit there for yeah. you know an hour and then go answer questions, it's a totally different thing. You know, uh, it's not a good look. It doesn't look good, and I don't think his his whole press conference after it also doesn't look good. He basically just said, "Yeah, I'm a sore loser. Deal with it." You know, he basically yeah. said, "Uh, yeah, I'm." Like, I don't care, pretty much. It was basically a big middle finger to everyone. Do you think Cam Newton should have just, just, just said, I'm just here so I don't get fined? But everything would have been, been better. Yeah. I, I mean, it would have been funny. It would have been funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just like it's if just, you're going to have that persona on the field, take the heat. Like, I you're going to have to, if and you're going to dab gonna, after a first down and get yeah. in someone's face, if you, you're going to say, keep me out of the, if you don't like it, keep me out of the end zone, then you better be ready to, then t- you can't to, sit to, up face, there and to face the music when you do little, get stopped. You know, let the words hurt you. Like, 
Okay. They don't make band-aids for hurt feelings. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Uh, you can't make a commercial like that and oh, then did you get see the, stomped and the then funniest, not take it. The absolute funniest thing I saw on Twitter was they dubbed the sound of his <laughs> commercial with 2 chains, where it's like, they don't make band-aids for hurt feelings, and it's him walking off stage with his head bowed when he started no, off the interview. I didn't see yeah, that. That yeah, was funny. Classic. Well, that was funny. The, the thing I see from it is, I, like, treating the media, yes, I media, we're all technically, like, really media. We are the media. Uh, yeah. I'm fine with, you know, athletes, if they just don't want to, like, if they just don't want to do it, like, whatever. Like, I'm fine if they just want to disrespect, them, like, some of the media, like, people in that. Like, I don't care. It's fine. But it it's just how they want. Like, it's just, it's their job to go and do to it. To me, there's a difference between college athletes in an emotional situation. Yes. In a prof- like, if, if the Beavers took a one and done out in the... You know, March Madness and Gary Payton or Trace, you know, they're kids. They're call they're students. Mm. I don't know. I mean, college sports is so big now. It's I'm just yeah, saying it's I almost would, like it'd be more you, understandable, you but when you're own you're playing representing the Panthers, you're making I don't know how much money does Cam Newton make? I think a hundred million. I I mean he's got a hundred million dollar <laughs> contract. The, just but, like how yeah. people gave Marshawn Flack for not wanting to show up. I mean, I don't have you a huge, I don't have a huge issue with it. You got a uh, I mean, and if you're in the media, you shouldn't be criticizing him. This is great for you. Yeah, well, like, yeah. It, this it gives is, them. So this makes your job so much easier. Can you mean it's stretched out? It'll this will be talked about at the beginning of next season. He's, oh, he's going to answer so many Imagine questions. Imagine if the Panthers go zero and two next year too to start the season. People are going to uh, lose their mind. Day. Oh yeah, they're going to lose yeah. their mind with Cam Newton. You know, it's just I don't know. Cam, Cam's got a, it. Seems like Cam has a different set of rules than other. You know, players in the NFL, yeah, yeah, which is it's not it's not fair. But Cam has a different set of rules. Cam said it himself. And, you know, there's no one like me. You've never seen anything like me. So you kind of have you can go out there and say it and embrace it. But yeah. then when when you don't like it, you can't kind of shy away from it and then go say that's not fair or be upset about it. You kind of you have to embrace it. Yeah, really. I agree. What do you think, Grant? As I don't know. a it's, self-proclaimed it's fan. It's tough because I see both sides. I mean, I see the whole representing the NFL type thing, but also I've never been in the position of losing one of the biggest games in professional sports and then having to go yeah. talk about my feelings. Nor will, nor will any of us ever minutes be after the game. Yeah. situation. Yeah, exactly. So it's hard to know because I've never been put in that situation. And I have a feeling that it would be very tough to go up there and answer all these questions while you're just getting publicly criticized. Yeah, um, yeah, and well, and Chris Harris is right there next to him. Yeah, too. Well, also, oh, not, yeah, that was, there was that part too yeah. where he's hearing the interview of him yeah. getting you, you pretty much Cam, just torn apart. Cam looks over at him and just gives him this death stare, and it's yeah. just like that's yeah. when Cam's just I'm done. Whole other story. Why can't they separate him? Yeah, make it. That, it was that, in that, the that's same situation for Cam. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, completely. Totally and NFL. also, granted, uh, the the media or like the guy who was asking the question to cam was just rambling and like he kept going yeah, on and yeah. on yeah and it was a ridiculous question and it's Grant, like, it was you know re- where you're going with this so you can stop talking it was just like thing. a guy that's just like hey it's no like kevin durant where he just gets uh media credentials and take yeah photo. but like I, the way i see it is this guy just got media credentials and Wanted to just ask Cam Newton this ridiculous question, this ridiculous like long they question. Were just, they just weren't good questions. It wasn't. And, good, it wasn't good questions at all. And so, granted, the questions were terrible. But as Cam Newton, you have to. I mean, you just have to be professional. You yeah. have to. You just have to go yeah. through it. You, even if you just give the question, you know, the answer. I'm just here so I don't get fined, or just yeah, or okay. Yeah, I no, mean, honestly, I agree. anything looks better than than the walk off. Yeah, 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 yeah. The walk off, I think, is. I mean, I could deal if he if he just sits through the whole press conference, silent. And, you know, gives like one word you know, answers. Yes, one word no. answers. Fine. Like I'm more okay with that. And then, but the whole walking off, I think, is what really kind of puts it over the top. Yeah. And with the hoodie on and everything, just that is really what sets it off. Uh, that's our take on that. If you have any opinions on the whole Cam Newton situation, Peyton Manning situation, we'll talk about that a little bit after the break. But well, uh, let's, yeah. just, let's just power through Peyton Manning right now. Want to knock out Peyton Manning now? Yeah, All right, Peyton Manning now. We'll take a break and then we'll come back with the NBA. But Peyton Manning, one of the more feel good, uh, feel good well, situations coming out of the Super Bowl, yeah. coming from Cam to Peyton. Uh, Peyton Manning <laughs> comes uh, and he wins his second Super Bowl. There's, there's. It's a great for he's like a legend. He's, he, he's, he's a le- Eli face. Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about Eli face in a second. But great for Cam or great for Peyton Manning. Still on Cam Noon. Uh, you know it, it's just great to see. Most likely, 
Peyton Manning going out and winning on top. I would really hope he's done. Here, I don't here's too, the too. thing. I was texting Jeff on the night of the Super Bowl, which was also his birthday. It was. That was your birthday? It was, yeah. yeah I'm I'm happy, happy, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. I, this, I don't think I've ever heard this scenario from someone. I was texting Jeff, and he said he's more of a Tom Brady guy than a Peyton Manning guy. Absolutely. Very, and I'm a Seahawks fan. It's Absolutely. A big, it's a big rare, uh, rare take right there. Absolutely. How do you dislike Peyton Manning? This all kind of goes back to... Uh, I knew it stemmed to some it issue. It started in, I don't know, probably <laughs> elementary school. Wow. I just did not Pain like... Peyton has haunted you for years. No, it's not it's haunted me. I just never liked all the, like... Peyton never won in the playoffs. And, like, my thing is, I think Peyton just gets overhyped. Don't get me wrong. Peyton's great. But is Peyton one of the best quarterbacks of all time? No. I mean, Peyton's not better than... He's not better than Joe Montana. You don't think he is? He's not, no, I don't think he's better than Tom Brady, and I don't think he's better than Joe Montana. But okay, He's that, got a 500 record in the playoffs. So would you put him in the top 10? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not saying there's like a that's bum, like a, but like... Would you put him in, yeah, would you, I'd put him in the top five. Yeah. I, I just... I don't think... I don't... Nah, I don't know. I don't think he's the best quarterback of all time. I like Brady because Brady won. And Brady's, saying, oh, just yeah. a, Brady's a winner. I like that. And I mean, I guess that kind of sounds like a bit of a front runner. But I like the way Brady goes about his business more than I do Peyton Manning. I don't like the Papa John's commercials. What's wrong with that? I don't like it. I don't know. It just rubs me the wrong way. I don't like that Peyton's, Peyton is haunted. Peyton, Jeff no, for Peyton's years. just so Peyton's so calculated with everything he does. He's almost you know kind of fake a little bit. Well, Peyton I, is so calculated with everything. Well, with you, what about the Russell Wilson okay. commercials? Well, you can almost argue it's that it's the same thing with Russell. I mean, I like Russell because he's this because he's. Because I'm a Seahawks fan, but if I'm not a Seahawks fan, I understand why people aren't liking Russell Wilson. Yeah, because he is robotic and is Russell Wilson the, he's is calculated a robot. Like, very like, bland. Like Peyton Manning, he's bland, and I, I totally get that. I wonder how uh, Russell Wilson is. He's just going to Google some more Valentine's Day like quotes, <laughs> like love quotes, and tweet them oh, out. Come on, like more robot stuff. <laughs> I don't know who hasn't done that, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, but oh like you God. said, just just a, just athletes, uh, or just the Peyton Manning you said he's almost fake. But you can almost just mention that uh, athletes when they talk to the media or yeah. anybody like that, it you know the they, they have, have to, to be put, they have to just you know at, sure. put the robot voice on. Peyton's got personality. The, it, you you know, know, you get him outside. He's funny. He's a funny guy. You see him on on Jimmy Kimmel the other night making fun of Jimmy the Eli Fallon. face. Yeah, Fallon, I mean, the Eli right, face. That was funny. I have significantly lightened my stance on Peyton as the years have gone by and I've kind of looked at it more and like... Would you share a Papa John's pizza with him? Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I'm not saying like, I hate Peyton Manning. I'm never going to want to hang out in a room with him. No, if, like, if I ever had the opportunity to meet Peyton Manning, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Which, would I you, just uh, like Tom Brady more. On a chicken parmesan sh- sandwich, would you bite on one end and paint it on the other end, and you guys uh, wait until you meet to the, the middle? Style? Yeah, yeah, lady in the no. tramp style. Okay, no, I wouldn't chicken even do that with Tom Brady. Parm, you taste so good. I can't. I hate the nationwide commercials too. All right, look, <laughs> they, 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 they haunting Jeff stop. right now. They gotta stop. Peyton haunts Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if that's what you want to call it. Anyways, All back right. on the back on Actually, Peyton Manning. He wins the Peyton game. Manning with this because this is. I, I kind of mentioned this on Beaver Sports Show last night. Uh, he just could have been, you know, he could have just been w- walking around. Just, Peyton Manning, they played a prevent offense. Oh, it's third and nine, and Peyton Manning chooses to run the ball. Yeah. Like, they, I, I really don't want to get into this anymore, but Peyton Manning not play well in that Super Bowl. I mean, I know people well, are going to play 40 yards, yards. People, are gonna of the look, season. Right, people are going to look back at this and go, wow, Peyton, you know, got his two Super Bowls. He was Awful. There was, he Peyton got Manning bailed a, out by a, by a really good defense. Yeah. Had a QBR of 9.9. Yeah. That's Cam Newton had, had a QBR of 16.9. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. I said something too. Okay, but like there's been years in the past. I think one year was with the Colts, and then the year uh, also when Peyton threw for the 50 touchdowns with the Broncos. I think it was his with first year 50, back. 55, yeah. 50, yeah, 50 something. And those are the two years where it's like, oh, Peyton Manning. Yes, he should win the Super Bowl. Like those are the years where you think, yeah, exactly. and he gets housed by the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, you know, like those are the years where you think that Peyton Manning. Yes, you should win the Super Bowl. No, it doesn't happen. You're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay, when even though thirteen for twenty three for one hundred forty yards even in the, even in the and no first touchdowns. Super Bowl that Peyton wins with the Colts, he doesn't play particularly well. Yeah, that, I, I well, mean, that was also in Miami. If you remember the game, because that was in, in sure. the rain and the field but was sure, muddy. There's, there's all these excuses for Peyton Manning. 
Manning and why he doesn't play well. Yeah, so he, he threw a pick and he played in Miami again against the Saints with perfect weather. He throws a pick to end the game for yep. the Saints. He threw a horrible pick to Coney Ely in that game, and no one talks about it. And granted, we shouldn't. I mean, he won he won the Super Bowl. Yep. I'm just saying, you got to look at these things rather than just blindly throw, throwing things out and there go. Peyton Manning's the greatest. Calm down for a little bit and kind of really assess it. All right. Mm, I agree. Wait, wait. What's that sound? Oh, we've hit one o'clock. <laughs> Mood minute. Mood minute. Welcome to the Mook Minute. Mook, are you prepared to go on the clock for the Mook Minute? Are you yes or a no? I believe I am. All That's right. kind of funny. Shout out to Kyle Rinker. As <laughs> the minute went off, started. he texted me and said, when's your minute? All right, well, it started now. Uh, you have, okay. You're five seconds in. Okay. Well, I just want to say to uh, Jeff is that it, Peyton Manning did beat an amazing defense in the Bears in the Super Bowl. So that that's one thing I have to give him. I mean, I don't know okay. if they're better than the you know, Panthers. I'm not get in, but I'll let you do your minute. Anyway, <laughs> what, minute. I, what I want to talk about, I don't know if you guys saw, at four in the morning last night, Ty Lawson tweeted, Ish is hitting the fan now. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how drunk Ty Lawson was when he tweeted that. Oh he may have been on the road tweeting that <laughs> drunk. Oh. Oh. 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Something bad's going on in Houston right now when they're getting smacked by the Blazers by 22 games in a row. And it's the same team as last year. Four. Against a rebuilding three, team. Two. R.I.P. Houston. All right. That's your minute. <laughs> that's what, that's good Any minute, minute like spent it. ragging on Houston is a good minute. For yeah. Me. yeah. Respect. We'll uh, get, trust me, the last hour of the show is going to be pure NBA trade slash all star slash NBA. Yeah. Got, we got a lot to say. But that, that was a good movie. Good. All right. Finishing <laughs> up on Peyton Manning. What do you guys think? I think he's done. I'm, so I'm giving him 90%. I hope, I hope, oh, I do too. I hope he's done. I really hope he's done. I, I, I mean, like I said on the sports show last night, I think he's done. He's going to relax. Go play golf with Papa John. Why doesn't he just announce it, though? I, he's going to stretch this out. I already Peyton. feel Peyton. Peyton is calculated. He's going to make a spectacle out of it. All right? Peyton's not... Peyton, Peyton wasn't... He wasn't going to announce, you know, retiring at the Super Bowl because he didn't want to take away from Von Miller. Because if Peyton Manning... He knows if I, if I announce right after the Super Bowl, no one talks about the team. It's all about Peyton Manning. So Pey- yep. I think Peyton's kind of waiting, let it die down, let all these rumors flare up. He'll go flirt with the Rams just to kind of like, oh, is Peyton Manning coming back? So Sports Center can fill Magic, some segment, uh, you know, in the middle of March. When Magic Johnson going on. said that uh, he's uh, looking to recruit Peyton Manning. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that was awesome. Pey- you know, okay, Peyton went on Jimmy Fallon with Magic Johnson for a reason. Magic Johnson, he had the first season tickets for the Rams. I mean, that's not a coincidence that Peyton Manning goes on with Magic Johnson to do that. Just to get the L.A. hype going. Exactly. He's yeah. going to get the L.A. hype going, and then he's going to pull the rug out from L.A. and just not not do it. And I don't have a problem with that. Then he's going to go buy the Titans. <laughs> That's a look it up. Peyton Manning is, 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 is interested in buying the Titans, and the Titans are going to be for sale here in the next couple of years. I would say he's relo- got the money. Dude. Relocate he's, he's the Titans. Be, yeah, well, he doesn't have enough money to buy the Titans Straight outright. Up, but, yeah. but he'll be in like he'll be like Magic Johnson with the Dodgers. He'll be in, in some sort of ownership group, and they'll, he'll just always be on TV. And you're like, oh, only one that owns the Dodgers is Magic Johnson. <laughs> yeah, but Magic is like okay. You guys probably don't watch a lot of Dodger games, but when you watch Dodger games, they don't show Magic all okay, that often. Magic not, isn't always okay, there. Not not just like say it's like uh, FSN LA or whatever it is. It's it, actually Time Warner Sports uh, Dodgers because okay, okay, we okay. the uh, Dodgers and Lakers have their own channels okay granted maybe not their site always shows but whenever a dodger game is on espn sure they always show magic johnson yeah magic you know i went to a lot of dodger games this summer magic was not at one of them which is kind of disappointing but he's not there as much as people think okay it's different with it's different it's different with peyton manning though eight home games he can do that okay i don't know where we got with that but why we've some sort, some sort of turn took us on that path. <laughs> Peyton Manning, just and the Peyton Rams. Manning and associated yeah. with magic, and that Jeff yeah. took it on the Dodger twist. I, I didn't take. I just I said like Magic Johnson, which is a fair <laughs> similarity. <laughs> True. Yeah. So I think uh, any other Peyton Manning situations we got? Just Budweiser sipping. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a thing too. What if <laughs> what if Cam Newton won the Super Bowl? And he goes, I'm going to go out and I'm going to drink a lot of Budweiser tonight. People oh. would kill him. 
Yeah. Like the scenario like, of that is like <laughs> what? And then yeah, yeah. it just kind of people would kill Cam Newton if he did that. Yeah, but because it's Peyton Manning, it's it's it's, it's totally fine. different. Yeah, yeah. Yep. it's like yeah, oh, yeah, classic uh, southern southern cat just going back and southern drinking, twang, drinking a couple Budweisers. And Cam Newton does. It's like, oh wow, he's going out clubbing, blah blah blah. Yeah, but it, it's kind of like it's kind of like LeBron a little bit, you know. Like after LeBron went to the Heat, where mm. anything LeBron did, you know, it scrutinized. was scrutinized. And it's kind of like Cam Newton right now. Anything Cam does is going to be looked at under a microscope ten thousand yeah. times harder than anyone else. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. That was a little ditto. Agree. I like that. <laughs> Three. We're we're two, green fellows on one. answering. <laughs> Agree. Oh, I didn't know what so I, I, I sorry, I didn't know where that was going. Mm. All right. Agreed. <laughs> Wanna try it again? All right, all right. All right. Three, two, one. Agreed. Agreed. Man, that was nice. <laughs> perfect. Hit the PSA. That felt silky. <laughs> yeah, that, right. that's a perfect time to go to a PSA. All right, we're gonna take a quick PSA break, but when we come back, we got NBA All Star Weekend kicking off, some trade rumors, NBA trade deadline rearing up. What about eight days away, something like that. About a week away, right? Trade deadline around I think the eighteenth. Yeah, right? It's the eighteenth. Yep. Chris Bosch out for the All Star game. Just, just FYI. Saw that. Yeah. Is that breaking news? Yeah. Yeah, it's breaking news, and Al, Al Horford, Horford is replacing. Yeah. The re- how? Breaking news, growl. Breaking news, Panther. <laughs> oh, it's usually Eagle. <laughs> the Eagle screech of the breaking news. <laughs> All right, so that's setting it up. NBA talk to come. PSA break. You're listening to Second String Sports, 88.7 FM, KBVR. Stay tuned. Do you feel passionate about equality? Sometimes it gets lonely fighting for what you believe is right. Stop by the Women's Center to find a community of people who will encourage and support you. Whether it's in your hunt for the perfect activism project, or your struggles with understanding sexism, or your worries about a friend with an eating disorder, this is your center. Use it. For more information, call the women. People think saving money is hard, but really, it's easy. It's as simple as changing a few spending habits. For free tips on how to save the easy way, check out feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Believe it or not, some companies still test shampoos and household products on animals. But 600 companies don't. For a free list showing which is which, contact People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. That's PETA, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. The Corvallis Area MPO brings you your daily bike safety tip. Tip number one, share the road. Ride in the bike lane or right side of the travel lane whenever possible. If there is no bike lane or the lane is narrow, you may ride in the middle of the lane just like a vehicle. Always use hand signals and be predictable. Remember... Drive your bike. Bikes are vehicles, too. The Corvallis Area MPO brings you your daily bike safety tip. Tip number five, using sharrows. Sharrows are located on slow-moving roadways where cars and bicyclists can safely share a lane. Use signals and assert your position in the center of the travel lane. Remember, drive your bike. Bikes are vehicles, too. Richard Burkell, National Council on Aging. As we age, our immune system weakens, leaving older adults at greater risk for the flu. Immunization is the best protection. Ask your health care provider about flu vaccine options specifically for adults 65 and older. Visit ncoa.org forward slash flu. At highway speeds, the average text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. That's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop texts, stop rex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. My name is Jordan Villeman, and you listen to Second Stream Sports on 88.7 KBVR Corvallis. All right, thanks, Jordan. We are back. Second String Sports. What? What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Jordan. I don't know. That was funny. Yeah, it just you gotta thank funny. him. You know, shout out Jordan. He just, Jake's is doing his due diligence. I okay, I see you. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into it. We've got the last portion of the show here. NBA trade deadline coming up. NBA All Star Weekend. And man, has there been some trade rumblings recently in the media today? We can talk about that in a second. Going off of Mike's recent 
Roast of Houston, Dwight Howard. I know that hits a little, a little close to home for Jeff, but I don't like Dwight Howard. All right, I'll put it that way. S- you know, segueing off the whole Peyton Manning thing, Dwight Howard, I do not like. All right, so we can get into it here. Uh, let's talk about trade talk. What we think is going to happen, the trade talk that has been happening, and what we think should happen. I want big moves. You want big I moves? Love you think big moves happen? Move. I, 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 I like them too, but I don't think anything's going to happen. Think nothing really happens. You like, don't I think we, Dwight's going to be moved? No. Well, they're, they're talking about him to the Celtics, but if you're Boston, why? Just originally today, they were talking I mean, about why? him to the Blazers. Yeah. For who? Ed Grant, Davis. And, I, I saw that Bill Simmons said something like... No, there's several other outlets. Yeah, Bill Mason Simmons, Plumley and the, Tim Frazier for Dwight Howard. <laughs> I, I mean, okay. Dwight Howard... Dwight Howard, you are renting him for half. I mean, for the second half of the season. When you look at it like that, I mean, it's not the worst thing. But I don't see Houston trading Dwight Howard to Portland. Is his, the team, con- is the his team contract is chasing done? Houston right now? Unless contract Houston ends goes, this summer. Yeah, okay. ends this summer, or he's likely to opt out. I think he's gonna. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't know why Houston would trade him to Portland. I, I, especially if you're going to, I mean, unless Houston goes, yeah, we're just done. We're not going to try and make the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Cause other, cause I don't think a Celtics situation now that just doesn't no. make sense because the Celtics have so many like Celtics first round draft picks right now. I don't so, think you okay. should mess with that. Dude, that's okay. We'll talk about the Celtics here in a little bit, but as for Dwight, I don't see them trading Dwight at all. I don't see that happening. Maybe the heat, maybe the heat, but like a little I, white side. Well, Howard white side swap. is also being, mumbled about being moved by the deadline as well. I don't I don't see Dwight getting traded not because the Rockets just because like, there's no fit. Yeah, cuz I don't think there's anyone out there who wants him. And, you know, if you're the Rockets, I think you just let him, you know, you let him leave in free agency. There's no there's there's really no yeah. point in keeping him. I mean, he doesn't make your team better. I he's he's going to ask for a max deal. You want to pay Dwight Howard 31 million a season? Unless no. Dwight Howard just for sure, just goes. Hey, yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> then you can just just uh, because if someone tries to take over this contract for the year, it just has, would have to be a fit for the team. And what about Cleveland? But like, like it just depends. Like, are they just getting just is Houston just getting pieces just to trade him? And then yeah, I mean, I would I would assume. I, well, I mean, if you said, I mean, like you it's said, like uh, Plumley and Tim Frazier. They're not asking for a like whole a, lot. A Timothy Mozgov <laughs> and like a Mon Shumpert. I don't know. Yeah. Why? I mean, well, yeah. Why not? Or like, even if you can keep Shumpert. Yeah. Why, I, I mean, if you're Cleveland, sure. I think that helps you out. You get a guy. You get a rim protector now, and you say, Dwight, you're not getting post touches, rebound, and block shots, which is what he should be doing his whole career. Problem is, Dwight doesn't want to do that. Yeah. You want to know an interesting the thing, thing that I was thinking about today is. The best point guard Dwight has ever played with in his career is arguably Jameer Nelson. When you that really think about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's never kind played, of yeah. weird. Put him on a team with Kyrie Irving and practically LeBron's a point guard half the time. The best point guard he's played with is Jameer Nelson. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad. Yeah. yeah. That's actually it's a good point. Actually true. Could have been Ty Lawson, as Mike says. <laughs> but it's just do you think he's able to put his I mean if he did go to like side? I don't, he would not work in Cleveland I don't think he can't mesh with big he, he would not mesh with the LeBron but if as so, okay from Grant's perspective yeah hypothetically to Portland I don't think he, I from an outside perspective of Portland I'll tell you guys right now I wouldn't want no so I would yeah, want to no. Dwight Howard as a Laker fan who lived through Dwight Howard you want nothing to do with him your team right are the Portland, the Portland Trailblazers already have are great hot. chemistry yeah. they're hot yeah, they're don't exactly in the playoffs I'd say just don't mess with it I just I say agree. keep yeah. it. like granted you guys like the Blazers they they're mo- most likely they're not going to win a championship as long as like as long same with the Heat the same with some other teams like yeah. you but well, if you make the playoffs that's almost like it's a it's a winning situation right there for the Blazers who were maybe expected lost oh, almost yeah. that whole starting five, and for them to be in the playoffs right now that's amazing. And, and yeah, and Mason Plumley, like if we're talking about you know pieces we could possibly give up, you know he's been a huge asset for us this year. Yeah, and going forward, if you bring in Dwight Howard, he doesn't put you at a championship level. No. Right away, no, it's, it's almost like it just doesn't make sense. So it just doesn't make any sense because you'll probably lose him after this year, and then you've already given up Mason Plumley. 
you might make the playoffs and then lose your draft pick anyway. So I, yeah. I, it just doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah, unless... Yeah, because... I mean, okay, if Dwight was guaranteed for a couple more years, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I like I, I would probably still say no, but that would be way more enticing than just a second half run and messing up the chemistry that we already have. Yeah, yeah. just wouldn't make sense. Yeah, I wouldn't. just... I don't... I mean, Dwight Howard is... I mean, by all accounts, kind of a, a locker plague. room killer, a plague. He yeah, is. it's not if Dwight Howard is the Dwight Howard from Orlando, from Orlando pre back surgery and getting twenty five points, twelve rebounds. Absolutely, you do it. But yeah. Dwight Howard's not that he's he's not the same player. He's what I think sixteen and you know maybe ten boards a game. You can you can you can fill that with two other guys to do that, which they do with Plumlee, Davis, and Myers yeah. Leonard. You don't you yeah. don't need Dwight Howard to do that. Yeah. I agree. I don't think it makes sense. Yeah, I just don't. I don't. I don't see Dwight Howard getting traded. So staying on the trend, uh, trend of the Rockets, we can talk about their most recent loss to the Trailblazers. Sort of sparked, man. You know, James, there was James Harden in the media being questioned. You know, what what was he asked? Like, what are you? You know, like the the team team chemistry is a little off. Blah blah blah. What are you gonna like? What changes need to be made? And he's just like, good question. Yeah, great leader there. Great leader in James Harden. And then you had Jason Terry storming past the media. What did it? We can't really repeat what he Just said. But quick point I saw on Twitter, kind of funny. Blazers this year, Kobe retires after the game. Blatt fired after they supposedly <laughs> sabotaged the game versus Portland. And now this this whole uh, Dwight Howard possibly getting traded immediately after the game. <laughs> kind of interesting. Player killers. Kind of interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what do you what do you guys think about the rock? The Rockets situation is just so weird. It's, it's, I don't get how it's a mishmash bad. of so much talent, but at the same time, it's not like well, they you know they fired uh, uh, who's their head coach Kevin McHale. McHale. Kevin McHale. They fired him at the start of the year, like uh, what, like six games, like in? five games, like in. five yeah. games, yeah. In. After after getting to the Western Conference Finals, yeah, and yeah, their team is just falling. It's just chemistry, yeah. James you know, Harden is not yeah, NBA two uh, K video game taught me taught me well that that chemistry is really important and you got to you got to keep that uh, chemistry up for have a good percentage to have a good team. It's a lot so, of guys who want to play individual is. ball, yeah, and uh, not playing together. Would you hi- as that? Would you guys hire a hitman? But he doesn't, you know, kill people. What? But he's but he's a, a razor hitman where he shaves people's beards off. <laughs> oh my god! How much would you pay for a razor hitman to shave off James Harden's beard? Zero dollars, because James Harden needs that beard in the worst way. <laughs> He's a pretty hideous human being. If you see, if you Google the pictures, the Arizona, of Harden, when he was on Arizona yeah. State, yeah, they're bad. Yeah, that dude needs that beard. I agree, but I'm not a huge James fan. So but just, just, but just to have, just beard. to have the reaction of the he wakes up beardless, like <laughs> yeah, no, dude, could my you beard. imagine? Like if he woke up beardless and he just shows up to the stadium one day without a beard. That's what I'm saying. It'd be so Didn't funny. He say <laughs> when he wins a championship, he'll shave it. <laughs> well, then I guess he's never shaving. Yeah, that's what I was. Saying. I guess he's gonna have the beard I mean, for life. Yeah, probably because he's not beating Golden State. He's not beating San Antonio out of the West. Hey, I, the Rockets might not even make the playoffs this year. No, no. Well, I think they will. Memphis with a with the loss of yeah, Gasol. Memphis lost Mark Gasol. Memphis losing Gasol really hurts them. And the, yeah. the other thing is, I see rumblings that Memphis may try to deal Conley. I saw that. Uh, I, think, I wouldn't be I, don't know why. I think they're heading. They're heading towards well, a rebuilding. Just doing, yeah, they're, they're yeah. heading that well, way. Well, that's what Memphis was a couple years back when they defeated the Spurs when they were like an eighth seed. Yeah. Uh, and and that was like that was like almost the high point of like because they're not they're not a championship team. Yeah. No, but there was uh, a rumor out there too that Memphis is gonna make a push for Kevin Durant to make a big uh, to make a big three with Gasol and no. Gasol and Conley. I, I don't, don't think I don't think it's that. a possibility. Yeah. I, well, there's, I don't there's see been Durant. so many there's been so many rumors swirling around Durant and he's gonna go to Washington. He's gonna go to L A. He's going not just L A. But he's, he's gonna, gonna go to the Clippers. The he, yeah, he's gonna consider the Knicks. He's, he's, I think he's staying in OKC. Yeah, I used to think you it was do? Washington, but well, Washington hasn't shown me anything to where you go. No. Well, here's the thing uh, for Kevin Durant. I because I could definitely see Russell Westbrook saying, "Hey, I want to bolt out of OKC. I'm done with this. I want to win. 
I want to be like the main person. I can see him going to the Lakers. I do too. And then because that's he went to UCLA. He's from LA. He's from I LA. Can, I can also it all see makes that. sense. So like, yeah. I could see Russell Westbrook bolt like kind of bolting like, hey, saying I'm out of here. Russell and would it, love that huge market too. Yeah. So it, it just totally would make yeah. sense. And then Kevin Durant's over here like, hmm, what do I do? And then like, do I stick with OKC? I stay with my team, or do I go somewhere else? Like there was also Golden State saying that yeah. he, he joined yeah. Golden State. So can you imagine? I could just, I could, def- I just see the OKC situation going in a breakup in the future because of ru- practically just because of Russell Westbrook. It's almost interesting to just think of that situation. What do you think the conversations are like between guys like that? You know, when it, there's an impending free agency, do you think they're completely focused on the season, or do you think there's mumblings like, "What are you going to do this summer?" Like, well, that's what, what you know. It's kind of happened with uh, LeBron in Miami. Yeah, like, like the conversations that probably went down there. I mean, even Durant two years ago. People are talking about it. People have been talking about Durant free agency for a long time. Yeah, I mean the Wizards went out and hired his old high school coach. Yeah, all for I just, mean all to try and get Durant. And that was I think two three years ago. So I don't know. It's it's got to be hard to deal with. But I, I I don't think he's really focused on that right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're playing out of their mind right now. So yeah, they they are so good and they're only the three seed in the West because <laughs> Golden State and San Antonio is are yeah, also are just ridiculous. So good. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, if they were in the if they were in the East, that's just like oh, God. if they were in the East, they'd be dominating. Yeah, and I think you know the whole Kevin Durant thing. It all depends on what happens this year too. I mean. That's a huge if part make, of it. Yeah, well, I if mean, they go, we'll see what well, happens in the playoffs. I mean, let's say by all all likelihood they're going to finish as as the three seed. So they're going to have to play yes. San Antonio or Golden State in the second round. Yeah, I that's tough. I mean, that's maybe if you're Kevin Durant, you look at it. Hey, LeBron's on the down. You know, kind of slowing down. I'll go to Washington. We got John Wall. We got Bradley Beal. Yeah, we were. A, you know, they were a playoff team a couple years ago. I think that's the best. TV money in the East. Easier, easier chance to get to a finals and win. Yeah, you get or out even of the West. New York. I mean, I, I don't yeah, think yeah. you do that with Carmelo, but. Well, that's the thing, because uh, even the Knicks, I've heard rumors circulating there, like, hey, they could possibly trade Carmelo. But it, I, w- I mean, yeah, I, I don't think Carmelo how many years left on Carmelo's contract. I don't know. He had a maybe a fat. He, he, he signed he like probably two has summers like four ago. More years, it was like a right? five year, like hundred and twenty five million dollar deal. Uh, it was something yeah. absurd. Yeah. So Kevin Durant, that'd be. And that's just an interesting thing to look forward to. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun summer. He'll be. Yeah, I love all the NBA free agency. Where is he gonna go? That's yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Right? And well, NBA like during the NBA off season is my favorite off season, just because it's always oh, just, yeah, it's so much fun. Oh, completely agree. There's craziness. I don't know. ML, MLB winter meetings are also fun. But. Just little little side note. Do you remember a couple? I, I'm with you there. A while ago, when uh, Portland was the leader to sign Hito Turkoglu. Uh, oh Hito. man, we were just so hyped about that, and we right were talking about finals. It. What? Yeah, right after his little finals and run, he yeah. agreed. He agreed he to a contract, agreed, and then his wife and his was like, "Nah." Wife hated Portland. That was the <laughs> he greatest. He went to uh, Toronto, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's just gone downhill ever since. Um, yeah. Anyways, just a little, well, Hito little, Turkoglu. a little throwback Friday. Let's Shout see. out Hito Turkoglu's wife. Flashback for, Friday. Yeah, flashback Friday for uh, preventing one of the worst contracts um, in <laughs> NBA history for the Blazers. Hmm? Well, plenty to talk about uh, about the Blazers if we want to. Get into a little of that. Maybe talk about All Star first, or get the Blazers out of the way. Mm, All Star, All Star, All Star, and the show right. Blazers. Perfect. So All Star game tonight is just the celebrity game, correct? Yeah. Kevin Hart versus yeah. uh, Drake. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just I did just see a vine on Twitter. Well, I'm kind of disappointed that Drake Kevin Hart's not going to play in the game. I know. I know. Thought maybe he could be a little player coach. I'll or bet something. he's going to have something up his sleeve where he shows Probably. up and plays. He goes like, I'm, I'm done coaching. You guys stink. I'm yeah, going to come into the much. game. And he has like some other celebrity come in and coach. Yeah. Something like that. Probably. Probably. So Saturday night, arguably the most exciting, probably the one we're looking forward to the most is basketball fans. All new skills challenge, allegedly, with big man aspects in it. We got DeMarcus Cousins. Draymond. Draymond. Uh, Anthony Davis. Yeah. I mean, There's I know one, me and Graham are rooting for CJ, but. Who, Should do you, be who, do you, uh, who do you guys have for the main attractions of the night? I know we talked about it 
Yeah, we talked about last, last week. week. But, you know, we'll see if we have any new opinions with some new. Let's give our final entrance. locked in. Who will? Who we think will win each the main competition? So what are we starting with? Well, let's start. Let's with, go skills. You don't want to start with a rising stars game. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Yeah, the skills challenge is so impossible to predict. <laughs> oh mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in the, in that scenario, I'm There's just going to really go no CJ just because I want CJ. And also, I don't really know the big man aspects. Yeah, of it. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I, I'm not going to make any predictions. I'm going to sit back, relax, and. So I'd so be willing to say Draymond wins that because Draymond. I mean, Dray, uh. this is his first All Star game, and Draymond said, "Like, I'm I'm going to do it big. You know, like I don't know if I'm going to get back. I'm going all out." So. <laughs> As far as like picking something like that, you want to pick the guy who's actually going to try. And I think Draymond, I mean, well, Clint, so is CJ. And he, yeah, or Draymond or CJ are two really good choices. Yeah. You really think DeMarcus Cousins is going to come out oh, there? He's and, not going to care at all. Are yeah. You kidding well, me? and also, when you look at Draymond, he has the body of kind of a post player, but he has those guard type skills yeah, also. So I exactly. think it's someone who fits both categories instead of just like a yeah. Anthony Davis or someone else who's mm-hmm. mainly. Mm. You know, Post. so yeah, I agree. I think Draymond's a good choice. I think CJ also has a good chance to win it because of just the first year hype. Tried, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think I think those are It'll two be good a fun choices. Ones. It'll be a really fun one. All right, so moving on, three point contest. Oh, by the way, the Rising Stars challenge is tonight. Really? Yeah. Huh. Nine, nine o'clock huh. Eastern yeah, on uh, TNT. They've never put that on a Friday before. It's, I'm they? looking at it right now. BBVA Weird. Rising Stars Challenge Friday nine uh, Friday February twelfth. Yeah, I think it's usually on a Friday. Okay. It's right before everything. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, never mind. Anyways, who you got? Lost ye. team Team World or Team USA? Team what? us. Yeah, Team, U- team, team USA. Us. I'm gonna take with Team World. Especially because there there are two Lakers playing uh, for Team USA. Just throwing that out there. Clarkson, Clarkson, and uh, D loading. D lo, mm. Angela Russell. Mm. Well. You seem really enthused. Yeah, Dude, that would, that's never been my favorite. Trust me. Yeah, not not I get too you. upset about missing that. All right, three pointer, three point contest. Three point. Should I read off the participants real quick? Yeah, I'd, sure. All right, Steph, mm. James Harden, Clay Thompson, Chris Middleton, Kyle Lowry, JJ Redick, Chris Bosh. Well, Bosh is yeah. Bosh is out. So yeah, so I don't oh. know who they're going to replace. So I don't know who's going to do replace him. Good point. Hmm. And lastly, Devin Booker. CJ? What if they slide CJ? They in actually could, could CJ actually, wanted to. That'd be a good choice with CJ to slide in there for the three-point shooting I contest. I think he should have been in three-point ahead of skills anyway. I would have loved to see him in the three-point. I think it would be really cool to see CJ in there. And he said he wanted to do it. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why not? They're probably scrambling to find someone, and he's already there. So Yeah, might as well. I mean, it, as well. it's the easiest... Thing, it's the easiest, you know, easiest solution. Yeah, for easiest solution. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It was well, there anything I else think Bosch We talked about, about this last week. Uh, if we had to put money on it, Grant and I both said that we'd probably put Steph Curry because well, yeah. ha- you have Steph to. Curry. Because, well, if I, if I'm going to choose somebody that I would be like, ah, oh, that'd be cool to win. I'd probably put uh, Devin Booker. That's what I was, I was just saying. gonna say. Devin Booker. Watch out for Devin Booker. I want yeah. Devin Booker to win. I think That'd Devin Booker will make it interesting. He's the youngest participant in the three point contest ever. He's what, like 19? Yeah. 18? He's 19. Jeez. 19. Teenager. And we're and yeah. we're here sitting in a studio talking yeah. talking, talking about, about him. him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what that Kentucky blue does to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. I'll, yeah. I'll throw it this way. I think Steph will win. Who's but... most likely to finish last in the three point shooting contest? Wait, Just... read it again. Ooh, last. I think it's Harden. All of them. Yeah. Well, Curry, I think Harden, Harden, or Clay. Thompson. Clay bricked it last year. Yeah, remember? True. Lowry, Middleton, it's almost like the guys who don't Booker. care, like who have nothing. To I just lose. don't see. They'll, Har- you yeah. know, they'll hit a strain on one rack and just be like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I see no Harden, effort. I see Harden like being at All Star Weekend more for the parties than you know the actual game, yeah. which is. Harden's not the only one there just for the parties, but I don't know. You said, you said Middleton, Middleton's, parties, Harden. Middleton's a good shooter. Middleton's yeah, a really Middleton good three point shooter. shooter. Yeah, but I don't know how there's, there's a difference in being like a really good in game shooter versus yeah. shooting off a rack. Well, that's the thing which also. It's totally different. It's totally different because who knows? He could also be really good at that. Yeah, because exactly. Mar- Marco I, Bellinelli a couple of years back. That was funny. Yeah. Was it last yeah. year or was it? He won last year. Paul Pierce won it like <laughs> four years ago where Paul Pierce is in it. And you go, why is Paul Pierce in the three point shooting contest? And then he wins. Yeah. yeah. So you never know. I don't know about Kyle Lowry, honestly. I think in front of the home fans, though, he'll be hyped up. Yeah, he'll you know, do something I cool. Think Toronto, I, think too too much might, I think that might be bad for him, though. That too much hype. Yeah. I think he'll try, but that doesn't really necessarily help you. Here, here's here's the thing with, uh, with it being in Toronto. Who, what, do you guys think... Drake will try to pull pull anything special. Yes, yes. 
something at halftime to come out during yeah. the game, do something. Well, isn't Sting doing the halftime show? Yeah. How do you good. not get Drake if you're the NBA? No, like, I, don't I don't know. I don't How understand. Do He'll be there. It's that. like, it makes like, no sense. I guarantee you Drake will be sitting courtside for that game, and they will show him during the game. He'll be like, how do you, he has how something do you up his sleeve. Sting over Drake? I, I mean, know. look, I like Sting, but I don't think NBA fans are going, yeah, Sting! <laughs> Woo! You know? Like, Agreed. Yeah. He'll do something, but yeah, back to the... Yeah, like we said, Kyle I think Lowry. if we're putting money on know. it, Steph Curry. Yeah. yeah. If, if if I, uh, you know, second pick up, I don't know why I'm feeling kind of J.J. Redick. Yeah. yeah. He's this, a good this is kind of a... Actually, well, J.J. Redick, didn't he... He bricked a couple last year where he, he, had, I feel he, like had, he had a did. two-pointer, didn't he? Oh, no, well, didn't he have like a tweet after? He's like, yeah, like I won like the oh, two point so, shooting yeah. contest or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So you never. I mean, I don't know about JJ. All right, <laughs> I'll I'll put it with this, this way: with the contestants in the three point shooting contest, your life is on the line. You got to pick one of them to hit a shot to save your life. Who do you pick? Steph. And it can't be Steph. Oh, it can't not be Steph. It can't be Steph because that's the obvious choice. Okay. I think I'm going to Clay Thompson then. Well, does does Clay Thompson like you or not? I mean. Mm, he's a fellow Pac Pac twelve player. Yeah. Maybe be like, oh, I'm gonna respect the Pac twelve playing opponents here. Yeah, respect hashtag back the pack. Uh, I think <laughs> I, wa- I I can also mention that I watched him in the Great Alaska Shootout, and watched him drop forty points, and we would just have a great bond. And there be you like, go. Uh, yeah. So I think I think Clay Thompson would respect me, and I uh, think I think he would uh, save my life. I don't yeah. know. That's a really hard question when you it's kind of more big stuff. Yeah, I actually would also go Clay Thompson. <laughs> I mean, not for any of those reasons. Just I think he's been on the big championship stage. He's yeah. older than someone like Devin Booker or someone like that. He's just a better shooter than a lot of these guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking Clay. Clay. Who do you yeah. got? I I think I'd also go Chris Bosch. It's like I'd I'd go uh, <laughs> I'd go Clay Thompson also. I I mean, it's pretty hard to not choose yeah. Clay out of that group. Jay? Uh, definitely about, not James Harden. Something James about Harden. Just mentioned <clears throat> JJ. I feel like JJ would just yeah, not but JJ know. went to Duke. So yeah. what? I could see JJ just well, laughing at that. You know, being J- maniacal JJ's, dookie. JJ, you know, he's improved. Oh, I didn't know it was established that they knew that they had to hit it to save your life. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah obviously, oh. they know they're then, no, shooting. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not picking JJ. That's then. why I asked Logan, I feel like, like JJ would be the type to try to kill someone. Exactly. Like, he'd probably laugh. That's, yeah, because he went to Duke. <laughs> yeah, he's he'd got, miss it. He's got a half sleeve yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. I was about to say, he got a lot of tattoos. JJ got tatted. Yeah. And he, he's improved. Ego's probably b- built it up since he was on the Magic a few years back. I don't know. I could just see, just be like, nah, I'm just, I'm not going to spare this kid. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll go, I'll go Clay. Yeah, I think we're all kind of on the dubs there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Dunk competition. My favorite. Uh, actually, I, I kind of enjoy the three-point contest more. But yeah, dunk, dunk contest is definitely the most hyped up. It's the most hyped up one. It could be really good or yeah. like last year when they did the stupid teams. That was two years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that when, was bad. When it, like, you, you didn't bad. know that it did end, you're like, it's over? Like, yeah, that was one? bad. A team one? Like, yeah, uh, I didn't like that one. They got so much flack for that. Like, okay, we got to go. Back. Yeah. Last year was good, though. Zach threw down, but read off the uh, participants for the dunk. All right. We got Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon, Will Barton, and Andre Drummond. Yeah, we, we said this last week as well, but... Uh, and I it just it, like if we had to throw money on it. I'm going with Zach. He was just built for a it's dunk definitely contest. Levine's to lose. And yeah, if yeah, exactly. I'm going for a second, we kind of debated back and forth. Kind of flip flop. I kind of I have Aaron Gordon. I'm with you with, with Aaron Gordon. So I think Gordon could do something pretty cool. Kind of that long, you know, athletic power forward. Yeah. Type. Man, and hey, also hashtag back to pack. The thing yeah. is though, like you got to think about it personality personality wise. It's all about. Who's gonna be the one to do the weirdest? Like Will Barton. Let's, Will Barton. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm exactly. saying. Let's be honest. Aaron Gordon probably is not gonna do anything crazy, entertaining, or funny. You don't know that. I, can I, see, I don't know that. Okay, but, to that, I could see Drummond getting pretty creative. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, he, being, did being just, alone, he did just he did you know have a little injury tweak recently. So who knows how he's you know yeah if he's gonna go all in. But Drummond, Drummond, Drummond. I think Drummond. Will's gonna. I think Will's gonna do some potentially involving Damian because Damian's going. Is in Toronto to support CJ and Will, so yeah. I really wish, uh, I really wish Wiggins would have done it. Yeah. Maybe in back in back yeah. in Toronto, him and Levine against each other, that would have been cool. There was that Wiggins dunk against wasn't the Blazers. Uh, oh man, oh, that was, wait, wait, that was vicious. I don't know, last year, a week ago, two yeah. weeks uh, ago. 
I don't feel like we played the two pretty sure it was. Recently. Yeah, I feel I'm pretty sure you played the two. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was a pretty sick. Oh, game. yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, I Wiggins would have been awesome. I don't know. I, I'm kind of with Jake with I think Will Barton at two, but I can yeah, obviously yeah. see Aaron Gordon. Like, I, I think two and three are Aaron Gordon and Will Barton. Yeah, uh, it's, just, it's a toss. It's a coin flip. I, d- really. I just think Will Barton, you know, after I'm, being in Portland, he's a people's champ. He's gonna find something to get the crowd yeah, hyped. Something yeah. creative. Something like I'm that. just on the hashtag back the pack. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you there. No, I, yeah. I see it. All right, NBA D League All Star Game also on <laughs> Saturday. I don't know. Jonathan Simmons, my favorite uh, D League player, he's, is uh, now on the Spurs. On so. the Spurs. Is Jimmer participating? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really click the link to see the participants. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> worth the click. I mean, I can look it up. The Fun fact, the dunk contest is during halftime of the game. Really? Wow. Yeah. That would be kind of a cool event, though. Like, there are some good dunkers in the D-League also. I was watching so, it. Okay, partici- I got the participants here. Jarvis Threet of your Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Uh, JP Tokato. I remember him at uh, North Carolina. Oklahoma City Blue. Oh. DJ Steffens of the Canton Charge. Walt Lemon Jr. of the Fort, your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. <laughs> and uh, Kiefer Sykes or Skies? No, Ooh, Sykes. Is, I'm right. Why does that sound familiar? Kiefer Sykes. Yeah, of the Austin Spurs. Are you a big Austin okay, Spurs that's fan? Why I, that's why I know the name. And then John Jordan of Raptors 905. Those are some great Raptors names. 905. Those are some great D League names. Yeah, but like for real, like I was watching a highlight video the other day of D League dunks. There are some impressive guys because a lot of the guys that play in the D League are just incredibly athletic, but don't have like the but skill don't or have finesse. like. Yeah. A whole complete Package. game, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I, that might be entertaining. I don't know about the actual game itself. But <laughs> I'm, the dunk I'm, contest looking, I'm looking at the ga- cool. at the uh, the rosters here right now. There's like it's a lot of guys. If you follow college basketball, you're gonna realize like Keith Appling, yeah, played oh, at Michigan wow. State, uh, Rakeem Christmas, yeah, uh, Quinn Cook, mm-hmm. uh, Jimmer Fredette did make I it. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, Sean Kilpatrick. See, those are like pretty decent guys. DeAndre cool. Liggins, um, Jordan Mickey, and Jarnell Jarnell Stokes. Uh, that's just the East. We, we still got we still got the West to All go. Right, hit, hit us with the West. I'm mean, right. still interested. Uh, Brandon Ashley. Um, okay, oh, that's the Arizona forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vander Blue. Uh, Marquette. He, Marquette. Yeah, yeah he's see, on the Spurs these are big names. Bit. Yeah. Um, let's see. Two Holloway. He went to Xavier. Mm. He okay, actually, yeah. Two Holloway was a dude who uh, dunked on LeBron. I'm pretty sure in that uh, in that camp. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, um, Orlando Johnson. Shout out to uh, uh, UCSB. Oh, uh, let's see, and Elliot Williams. It sounds oh, familiar. Elliot, North Carolina. he played for the Blazers. There yeah. you go. But he, that's, play, he was Memphis. He, yeah, yeah, he would play for the is, Blazers yeah. like four years ago. I liked L.A. Williams. He just was injury prone. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, those are your D League All Stars. See, I recognize your a lot D of the names. That's actually All-Stars. a lot better of a game than yeah. I would anticipate. It's, I would it's actually pretty much like, like a college. If I had NBA game. TV, I'd probably watch that. Yeah, like, I, I, I shouldn't say like watch it religiously. I'd turn it on. Wait, and like yeah. check out the <laughs> score You'd for like the, five the minutes. Good old five minutes. And then check. go like, all right, I'm watching D League All Star game. I there's something better I can be doing right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Didn't you watch the uh, D League All Star Game on YouTube one time? Uh, it was a dunk contest. Dunk contest. All right, there it is. Mike. Yeah. Mike has watched Mike, it. You, dunk know, you know what I'm talking thing about with the dunks, don't? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some any dunkers. dunk contest draws some attention. You can't. It's a dunk contest. You know. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the dunk contest for the D League apparently and uh, NBA. Didn't think you'd be going down that road today, now did you? No, I did not. Yeah. Well, last week we didn't think that we were going to talk about crockpots either. So <laughs> yeah, you know, stuff happens. Stuff happens. But the game itself, you know, not really much to talk about. It's all it all. It's always the same. It's going to be 130 to 120, 140, something like that. Yeah. Wasn't it like 160 to like 158 though last year? Yeah, something it like was that. A lot it was actually, I hit like 160 it pretty recently. <laughs> it only gets interesting in the fourth quarter if they if they decide to try. But I still watch it. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it, yeah. it's a fun game to watch because they just throw alley oops and take you're ridiculous just getting threes. Seeing all the stars, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, it's yeah. always interesting to see who's going to take over like the game. Like yeah. who's actually going to? Because one year was Carmelo, one year was Kyrie. Kobe's had his years. Durant, 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 Durant. Durant. Westbrook took it over last year. Westbrook. So 
It'll be interesting to see who takes over the All Star game. Yeah, 2018. Aren't isn't uh, Portland up for the 2018 All Star game? Up like like like, like the host they're, it. Like, yeah, they're, yeah, they're they're being considered for it. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna. I think it would be awesome. That would oh, be course. a lot of fun. That'd, That'd be, be pretty so cool. cool. We'd have to go. Yeah, Get, but, at least to the dunk contest. Yeah. I wonder how much tickets are to like the Saturday event. They're pretty expensive. We can look that. I would up imagine right they'd be more for the game though. Well, this I is mean, why, I'd rather. This is why you have a ticket app on your phone. If I'm gonna blow money, I'd rather go to the Saturday, but well, we'll find out. Because there might get... be a package for all three. That'd be awesome. Oh man, that'd be expensive. All right, let's see. <laughs> NBA All Star Saturday night. Oh, actually, okay. Uh, if you want to sit in the balcony, it's three hundred and twenty each. Uh, yeah. Wow. So let's see if you want to go in like. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh-huh. If you want to go lower level, it's about a it's, it's a grand. Wow. Mm. Per ticket, that's that's pricey. That's a lot for a dunk contest. Just for the dunk contest? That, they're Saturday night. Okay. Like all those combined. Yeah. You get th- see three competitions. Uh, let's for a grand. But a measly little grand. <laughs> That's a lot. I'd rather see yeah, it. I'd a measly rather, little grand. Honestly, I'd rather just watch it on TV because I think it'd be more entertaining. And then like go and then, out that night okay. just to like be out in the area. Yeah, and do that. Know? And then... I would save my money for a playoff ticket. To sit in the lower bowl <laughs> yeah, for the celebrity true. games, it's two grand. Ah! <laughs> right? What a waste of money. That's bad. What's a, what's a, what's a Sunday? Game, what's yeah. a Sunday? Uh, sorry, I'm... Okay, if you want to watch The Rising Stars, it's 111 to sit in the lower bowl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a little better. Um, 111? I still wouldn't spend that. It's 73 bucks if you want to go watch the All-Star practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do that. You would seven. Yeah. Oh, why? How long is it practice? If, if it, I mean, if no it idea, involves you being able to like sort of like if the players interact, you know. Okay, so you want to sit yeah. lower bowl? It's about two to three grand for the All Star game. Ugh. That's a lot. That's right, a playoff. I'd be ticket, reconsidering yeah. my. Uh, it's not even a playoff. Yeah. That's, that's more way more than a playoff ticket. Yeah. Well, not yeah. for. Lo- yeah, true. Yeah, Portland, Houston. I got tickets for like a little over a hundred. Yeah. Like and that was two years ago when it was but the, the Spurs Blazer one. I got a ticket for like seventy bucks. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's way more. Yeah. I don't know. We'd rather watch a playoff game of Same. my own team. Same. But hopefully we get it. It'd be good for the city. Oh yeah, it'd boost so much revenue. That'd be crazy. Young economic, Jake. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, so if we wanted. You know, finish out the show talking a little Portland. I know you got you two can chime in, but uh, it's been me and Logan can have a side conversation so, so about Jeff, how Jake so got dunked on last I, night. Yeah, Jake got dunked on last night. If you haven't if you haven't seen that, check it yet, out on YouTube. It's on, on YouTube. Beaver Sports Show Twitter. Yeah, at Beaver Sports Show. <laughs> Man, I got to look that up. Yeah, it was nice. I'll get my revenge. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Portland Trail Blazers. I know me and Grant have been paying close attention uh, as of recently. Definitely uh, something we didn't really expect. Finishing out January, I think I saw a statistic that said, like, even last year pre-Wesley injury, this team is doing much better in the month, just in the stretch of going into the All-Star break than we were last year. Is it, what, 12 of the last 15? Is that right? Yeah. We've won, like, yeah. I mean, chemistry-wise, it's a team that has no one with a huge ego, they like no playing together. All. They're yeah. all friends. And that's a big part in the oh, NBA. The we talked about this last week how, you know, it's a young team and not a lot of them had played together. So it took them a while to kind of figure out, you know, certain yeah. tendencies, certain rotations that mm-hmm. would work. And it's all starting to come together a little bit. Um, you know, clearly this isn't a championship team. Yeah. But. They are a lot of fun to watch. They try. Um, currently in the, the seventh, yeah, yeah, seventh spot in the West. You know, <laughs> you know, seven or eight translates to <laughs> Golden, Golden State, State or, or yeah. San Antonio. Pick your poison. I don't know. What do you think? Like so, playing it. Do you think by the end of the season, could you see the Blazers maybe like creeping into like the sixth? I mean, it's a possibility. Maybe even I could. fifth. It's because like at, anything below fourth is fair game. Honestly, I, I think the Blazers could do it. If only because uh, only because of the Gasol injury with Memphis. I think Memphis is going to take a step back at five. So then at that point, you got to chase Dallas, which you're a which game and a half back. Yeah, yeah I mean, Easily. it's doable. Yes. Uh, Houston's a half game back at Utah. 
I think Utah gets in over Houston just because I think Houston wants it more than Houston does. I mean, Houston's that kind of like kind of in the same spot as uh, as Portland, a young team haven't been in the playoffs yet. This is it's it'll mean yeah. much more to Utah than it does to Houston. Yeah, uh, I now think, that I'm looking at it, the Blazers could honestly push fifth. Yeah, the Blazers could realistically get to the five seed. Six is easily within range. Uh, I mean, you got to see how Memphis is going to do, but I think. But then Houston, Houston is just the variable that you don't know if they're going to pull it together or not. Like they I, could. For all we know, Memphis could make a move and go get someone before the before, before the, the deadline. trade deadline. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously, I don't think I think Brandon Wright right now is their backup, but yeah. I don't think he's the answer. I think that at the start of the year, my I think I predicted like a little bit surprising to a team. I'm pretty sure I said around 500. The Bucks? No, Blazers. Oh. Oh, okay. Around 500? Currently 500. I don't know. Well, it's, think, it's it's also surprising from the West standpoint that the yeah. West, because yes. a 500 record in the West wouldn't this even get you close. Two, wouldn't even get you yeah. close to the, the uh, into the playoffs yeah. the past couple of years. Yeah. So, granted, I, yeah, uh, it's still an impressive season by Blazers and some of the other teams are still just kind of hanging around, but it's even more surprising that the West, you get a 500 record that you are in yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, agreed. I And kind of side note, I think Terry Stotts, one, deserves an extension uh, soon, and two, He'll get it. deserves um, Coach of the Year, like, consideration. consideration. That's what I was looking for. Uh, get, a, get a couple votes. I mean, what he's done with the roster is it's unbelievable. Is impressive. Like Micah just said, we just back-to-back beat the Rockets in two games by 20 points when we lost our entire roster, and they're virtually the same exact team that beat us. Yeah, and they yeah. last year, and they kind of added pieces as well that just yeah. didn't fit. So. Didn't fit at all. I mean, this was supposed to be a bad team that has turned. People didn't very even predict us to, to have watch. over twenty five wins. I think oh, yeah. we're at twenty seven at All Star. I mean, I didn't think Portland would make the playoffs. I thought Portland was kind of. I thought they were going to battle the Lakers for like the tenth or eleventh seed. That's, that's what, that was a lot of the clearly a lot of yeah. was off on both. <laughs> as the Lakers are the last place team in the West. <laughs> Logan's right though the the whole West thing is making it. It's crazy. It, it's West is the yeah, new East. No one would have predicted this. <laughs> mm, not really. Not really. The East bottom four is still well, true. Yeah, garbage. Still awful. I mean, I'm saying it's like it's almost it's like a feel of the East. Yeah. How the East sure. was. No, not I mean, really, but still not really. I mean, if you look at the East, you got Cleveland and Toronto, and I I mean to me, I think Toronto's a nice story, but. Toronto's not winning a and title. It's the same with the Celtics. That Celtics are battling with nice Toronto. Story. They're not gonna. They're not. May you know maybe get to a conference finals and losing five to Cleveland? Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're not getting well, to the, the finals. Thing about, oh, just mention here real quick. Just the thing about Boston, though, amazing how like Brad Stevens Brad, is a great coach. It's, yeah, I was going to say it's, really it's, it's Brad it just took, it, it just took the you know the three year wrinkle time to well to if you look at their this roster plan and develop. And, Boston actually waited. They're they the same. With them. Yeah, no, Boston's I mean, what, not Kelly, even. Isaiah. Boston's not even where they're like their rebuilding process is at because they're still getting picks from the Nets from when they did the awful trade. The Nets don't have a first round pick, I think, until 2018. So they, you know, they were, they're the having. The Nets are despicable. The Celtics are having bad. multiple first round picks here in the next few years. Yeah. And once they get more pieces from that, build off of what they have, the Celtics are going to be a scary team the three Celtics, or four years down the road. The way, the way I've put it with the Celtics is the Celtics are a lot of B to B plus players, yes. a lot of like really good role players. They are one like elite player away from being dominant in the East. Their best if they had play- like DeMarcus Cousins, yeah. they'd be great. Because their best player right now is Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Granted, Isaiah Thomas is a good player. Yeah, he's a good player. He's, yeah, but he's a bounce, good bounce player around the league. He's a good player fitting into the right system with Brad Stevens, and it's just amazing thing that what the Celtics are doing, and it's Brad Stevens. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so I agree. Going back to the West, a little bit like the Pac-12 this year. Yeah, you know, teams beating up on each other. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we had a little uh, I visitor. Can't. Yeah, visitor. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So, yeah. what else do we have? <laughs> Sorry, you got thrown We're, off, but right there. Yeah, little love connection with Grant. That, it, it's it's the Valentine's Day show, yeah, man. It, 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 it was some issue. love. Yeah, Jake. Maybe instead of a trash segment, we can have a love segment. 
In what way? Yeah, Jake, you want to? I don't know. Sh- I, a little Valentine's this is your segment here. Yeah, this is your. This what is about, your. This what is about your Tinder? Shape. Who is someone that you're loving? Celebr- it could be like your celebrity crush right now. It could be just someone that's just, I don't know. And then I want one name of, Lo- of a female at Oregon State. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Not going to do that. Not, not Brooke. Jake, come come on. On. Not Brooke. It's found. It's I was going to say Jake. I could do Brooke. Yeah, well, Jake your potential I mean. wife could be listening right now, and you could have an incredibly not. sweet moment right now where you profess how much you really like her. I'm not going to say love, but... <laughs> And you get your shake Your face is almost as pink as your shirt right now. <laughs> if they can see, I'm wearing. Yeah, if you can see, Jake's wearing, shirt. Yeah. You got nothing. You got Jake? no one. I got nothing except oh. for anniversaries coming up this Sunday. Or, Jake, Jake and I, we have an anniversary coming up. <laughs> it's a long story. It's a long what are you guys story. gonna do? Wait, was it the uh, day of or the day after? Oh, well, we it was ten minutes. It was the day Monday. after. It, it was the day after Valentine's so Day. One yeah, year. we probably should just go to Dutch Bros and just sit in the same exact spot where we first met. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are interested in that story, you can slide into our DMs. Later, well, Nathan. Later, Nathan. Did you did, did you guys go to Campus Dutch or uh, the Dutch uh, Campus Dutch? Oh wow, it's a solid Dutch. I, I I guess I don't know. I'm not a big Dutch Bros fan. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what was that? Our intern coughing up a fur ball. Uh, <laughs> or a muffin man. ball. <laughs> yeah, well, Jake. I don't know. Do we have anything else we got to talk about? Uh, I don't I know. Don't, I don't know. If, I think we're. Who do you say wins the NBA All Star game? Uh, That's a fresh hot sports take. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I'm just gonna go west. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I'll go west because of Greg Popovich. We, yeah. we need some point spreads here if we're really gonna do this right. What what the spread is? Oh, do they have it? Oh, they don't have a spread up yet. Weak. Can Sorry. you even, can you even bet for oh, that in Vegas? You yeah. can bet on anything in Vegas. Mm, okay. Vegas is a, uh, a bunch of fun. When I was in Vegas and I threw down with some of my sports bets, I thought I'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill this! I know, I know old sports. I can definitely do this." Just only won one game, but it didn't get me anything because it was a parlay. Oh, and man. it's a lot like streak for the cash on yeah, ESPN. It it's like, like you, it, it's like, oh, I would know who's gonna win this the game, spread. and then it just nothing yeah, the spread is what gets you. Yeah. So I was in Vegas last uh, last January. And uh, so it was me and my girlfriend's family. And we put a parlay down on Purdue basketball and Baylor basketball because my girlfriend went to, Baylor, went to Baylor and her brother went to Purdue and they were both playing. We put a parlay down. Purdue wins. All we needed was Baylor to cover by seven and they lose by nine. Yep. And then I threw, I threw 50 down on my LA Kings to just win straight up. Had to, they needed to win, I think, by two and a half goals. They lost by one. I was, it was not a good day for, for yeah. sports gambling. Yeah. So then after that, I was just like, all right, I can't do it anymore. Well, I left. It wasn't that I couldn't do anymore. It was, yeah. it was not like I physically couldn't do anymore. Not that like to. I didn't want to do more. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. there are all sorts of prop bets yep. out there. All righty. Second string sports. We filled, we filled a, a pretty good two hours of time block last week. We, we, yeah, uh, we, we, hit sh- that, we struggled. Uh, we were hitting the. 40 minute mark well, talking you, you about crock pots. Well, you didn't week. spend a whole lot of time on Valentine's Day like Jake hy- hyped up. I, he was about to do it. and I tried I, to get you your love, love segment. But now, he, now he doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Chickened out. You can give yours. I love my girlfriend, Haley Leonard, if you're listening. Is probably she? not. Uh, probably not. She's working right now. I love you. Hope you're listening. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. She's out, she'll, she'll be in Vegas this weekend with her family. Oh, yeah. Any sports bets? They will probably bet on this. Uh, Bet on something. Her dad bet on the Super Bowl. He won. Bet on the Broncos. So that's good. Uh, other than that, no, they'll probably just go be playing slots, casino games, stuff like that. Win some money. It'll be a fun time. All right, there. Love it is. you. Quick, quick little news: Al Horford replacing Chris Bosh in the All Star game. We said that. Yeah, we, we already said, announced okay, that. I didn't hear that. that like an hour ago. <laughs> I just heard Chris Bosh was out. That was my fault. <laughs> But <laughs> for Al, a second time, it'd be great if Al Horford replaced him in the three you no point points contest too. And may God have mercy on your soul. No, all right. I didn't get any feedback on that. I, 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 was, I was too focused on yeah, the, burning. You grant. couldn't hear the sound bite. 
Cause Cause that was, was, what'd you what say? Was distracting. Uh, right. I said it'd be great if Al Horford replaced yeah, Chris I'm Wash. Down. That's awesome. Uh, Let's do it. Sorry, not not to rain on uh, Mike's parade, but uh, Mets right-handed pitcher Henry Mejia receives a lifetime ban from MLB after testing positive for PEDs for a third time. Yeah, he was their As closer. He's, he's wearing his Mets jersey right now. <laughs> Mike's not a fan. You got anything to say about that, Mike? We don't want Mejia. <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, you've been listening to Second String Sports on 88.7 KBVR Corvallis. Guys. FM, thanks for listening. 12 to 2 every Friday. Jeff uh, on once again. Thanks for having me, guys. Always uh, always a pleasure. You know, you can we always, love, always having, expect him. We love having Jeff on the show. Jeff, yeah. Jeff will be on many more times. I love but, being uh, on here. So, <laughs> so yeah. Thanks for listening. Have a good weekend. Uh, watch the Beavs game tomorrow. Enjoy the All-Star weekend. Uh, there's a women's game tonight. Damn cancer game. Hope to see you guys out there. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Happy Valentine's Day. Eat some chocolates. Play some nice music. I love you, Haley. Sorry I can't be with you on Valentine's Day. I'm being that guy right now. But. You, could, you could fly to Vegas. No, I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> It's not that I don't want to. It's just like, I can't. <laughs> All right. There yeah. it is. I tried, Haley. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This is Jake Logan Grant with special guest Jeff. Thanks for listening. See you next Friday. Have a great weekend. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. He said-